Seneca Lake in the Finger Lakes region in central New York, about 260 miles northwest of New York City, the village of Watkins Glen. Fantastic place to visit anytime throughout the summer. It's Labor Day weekend, the last weekend traditionally of summer. Boating on offer, a little bit chilly throughout this weekend too. And it's also the home of one of the great road courses in the world, Watkins Glen International and the scene of today's Verizon IndyCar Series race. The championship is at stake. Two races remain, and they're all chasing. The 26-year-old from Tennessee, Joseph Newgarden, has won three of the last four races. But Scott Dixon is a four-time champion. He is second in points, and he's won here at Watkins Glen four different times. Elio Castroneves has done just about everything he can in his illustrious 20-year career, except win a season-long championship. He still has a legitimate chance, and so does the defending champion, Simon Pagino. Thought he had a win last Saturday night near St. Louis. He wants to come back and restake his claim for the title. And maybe this is the next young American superstar. He's already won the Indianapolis 500. Now Alexander Rossi has won his first pole in IndyCar. Welcome to IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. 60 laps around this historic, nearly 3.4 mile road course are at stake today. But weather is a factor. It's been chilly all weekend. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s, and we've had heavy rain throughout the morning. At the moment, it's not raining, but as you see, there's a decent chance throughout the day before we get going. You see the big blob that's already moved through, but there is another that is set to join us sometime likely before this race is done. Well, the plan was to stand next to the Astor Cup, the trophy that represents the champion of IndyCar at the head of the grid on pit lane, but it's a little bit soggy this morning, so we're in the comfy, cozy home in the booth here today. But we've got a lot of stories to tell you and most importantly, set up the championship. There are just two races remaining and many are in play. And we've been a busy stretch here recently. This is the third race in a three week stretch from very different tracks. The big oval at Pocono, short oval last week at St. Louis, and now a road course and again in a road course in two weeks at Sonoma. And the championship Seven are still mathematically alive. Really, I think you're talking five, and Will Power is going to need a lot of help to get it done, but four very much in play because of how the points works. It's normally 50 points per race. That's what's on offer today, but it's 100 to win next week at Sonoma. So really, if you're within 80-something, you do still have a chance to be able to win the championship. Scott Dixon was 47 back a couple of years ago going into the finale when he won the race and the title at Sonoma. But everybody is chasing Joseph Newgarden. He went into last Saturday night's race at Gateway as the championship leader, but a late bold move on his teammate gave him an even stronger chance to take home his first title. After 14 years, IndyCar is back in St. Louis. Look at the scene here, it is jam. And here we go from Gateway. Newgard goes for the lead. Power goes around. A major pile up in the opening moment. Now let's see if anybody has anything for Joseph Newgard. We are now under yellow. This is how you can get the lead right here. And there's Elio Castroneves out in front. Third round of pit stop sequence is beginning. Something's wrong with Castro Neves. He stalled. Watch right, watch right, go, go. Castro Neves now running fourth. That was really damaging on a green flag stop. Joseph Newgarden is in front. Fifth caution of the night. Can anyone pick up spots here on pit lane? The two Penske drivers touch, and Joseph Newgarden goes back to the front to the inside of Simon Pagano. The next American superstar takes control of the championship. Yes, yes, yes. Good job, boys. Man, it's working for me tonight, tonight. That was our win. You know, I wanted to get inside of him. He gave me the lane, so I took it. The move, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, there was room with me. Anybody else, he would be in the fence right now. That's racing. You know, we, we got we to gotta go racing at the end of the day. And look at the role that Joseph Newgarden is on right now, winning three of the last four. He was 56 points back in the middle of the summer, fifth in the championship, but wins and a runner-up will help you charge your way quickly to the front of the field. But far from settled, 
at this point. Newgarden, though, thought he had a bonus point for winning the poll yesterday. In the final round of qualifying, he was in position to take his first poll of the season. This, in fact, was the last quarter of what could have been a poll winning lap, but that tiny mistake and tiny off cost him. He was ten thousandths of a second behind Scott Dixon for the provisional poll. Dixon looked like he would have the point to start the race, but the last man to come through and take his final time was the Californian Alexander Rossi, who won his very first poll. Drama yesterday, and Katie, as we saw, certainly drama last week. Kevin, and the fact that Joseph Newgarden was so disappointed with the third place qualifying effort, I think truly shows your championship mentality. And Joseph, you really lit up the stats since Iowa. What clicked then? I don't know. I think we've we definitely we got our rhythm going. You know, I think we had a good first half of the year, but it could have been better. And uh, you know, we've, second half of the year is really everything we could have wanted out of uh, out of this season. So if we could have put that together for the full full year, wow, that would have been something. So yeah, yesterday I didn't think we expected to be in that fight for the pole. And then when I was running that lap, I was like, oh, this is unbelievable. I can't believe we have a pole position car here. And I think I threw it away a little bit, but uh, we got the race today, which is most important. It's gonna be fun running with Team Penske. We're standing next to your teammate, Simon Pagino, who everyone was chasing in the points this time last year. And Simon, you asked if I was going to put you on the spot about your battle at Gateway with Joseph. Well, I'm going to. What was the, what was it like in the transporter after that race? Uh, it was fine. Uh, it was, um, yeah, quite frankly, I'm a little disappointed. I overreacted. My French blood really came out. Uh, yeah, I've got some Latin in me, and uh, sometimes, you know, the emotion goes up and down. And it certainly was a high, high moment of the season. I. Um, you know, I lost the race, and um, it was very disappointing. I think uh, I think uh, I'm, I could have done a better job. It was it was a it was a hard pass for sure. But uh, you know, you move, you got to move on. We got to work together for many many years to come at Team Penske, and uh, and that's the key to it. You know, it's um, we're gonna keep uh, keep everything quiet and, and and be strong for our team, and um, that's what I've decided to do. Move on, uh, come here. Unfortunately, we didn't qualify too well, but. It may be raining, and, and I hope it could be uh, good for us. And just before you guys came to us, we were talking, Simon is doing his rain dance all day long, guys. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of guys that would like to see it rain here today to mix things up a little bit. Well, someone who was anxiously watching that battle at the front last week was Scott Dixon. He was running third in that race. If they'd come together, maybe he gets a win. He still finished second. Now, remember, Dixon led the championship for seven rounds throughout the summer this year. He's back still within range, and he's at a place where he can definitely make up some points here today. The Iceman cometh to the Glen and he leaves with a victory. For the second year in a row, it will be Scott Dixon seeing the checkers. Hot, cold, wet, dry September, June, July, it doesn't matter to Scott Dixon. He is a winner once again. Nobody has anything today for Scott Dixon, the master of Watkins Glen. I think the master of Watkins Glen could certainly be an appropriate title for Scott Dixon. Last year certainly dominated this race, but we have mixed conditions today, and you have a lot of strong competition in qualifying. What are your thoughts after running the car in wet conditions this morning? Yeah, it was definitely pretty interesting. I think we uh, we tried to kind of go halfway on the setup uh, just because we knew the conditions are going to be kind of hit or miss, and it even looks like you know you might want to run a dry tire uh, to start here. There's a bit of a line forming and. We found, at least in the warm-up, that the wet tire, uh, you know, falls apart pretty quickly. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how strategy plays out here. Um, you know, see which teams, you know, threw all the eggs in the basket of being a wet race, and which, uh, you know, kind of stuck with the the dry weather setup. Um, because around here, I think it will make a big difference. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays out. Hopefully, we pick the right side. But uh, you know, the nine cars been strong all weekend. We, um, you know, came up short in qualifying just with traffic there. I think we definitely had the car to beat and uh, would have had a lap. You know, that that would have got the pole. But uh, Unfortunately, we didn't get it done, and um, you know, congrats to Rossi. That was uh, you know, a good lap by them and his first pole, and you know, it's always a lot of fun around this place. Uh, you can see from those highlights, never count out Scott Dixon. And he's very much still in the chase, and he's going to be starting next to the guy that he's chasing here in the championship today. That is Joseph Newgarden, and right behind Alexander Rossi as well, who won his first pole. And we can follow Scott Dixon throughout the day today. Go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. Well, Alexander Rossi this weekend signed a new contract to stay with Andretti Autosport, and he also won his first IndyCar poll. We'll talk to him coming up next. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Verizon. Go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. 
IndyCar racing is coming up in about 20 minutes from Watkins Glen, the middle of a great racing day here on NBCSN that started from Monza with the Italian Grand Prix called by our man Lee Diffie. And look at that. He is here and he'll be up in the booth here coming up in just a little bit. No spoiler alert, we won't tell you who won that F1 race because I know some of you DVR it and some of you on our crew. But tonight you can watch NASCAR at Darlington. The Labor Day weekend tradition continues. The throwback NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series race from historic Darlington Raceway tonight at 6 Eastern here on NBCSN. And there are just two left before the playoffs begin next Saturday night. They'll race in Richmond. 13 are already in with wins, so several in very precarious positions right now. And really shakes things up. Now, speaking of the throwback theme, Jamie McMurray is in a car inspired by David Pearson's 1980 Hawaiian Tropic Chevrolet. Brett Keselowski has Rusty Wallace's early 90s Miller Genuine Draft car. Kyle Larson has the car that Kyle Petty won for the last time, his eighth and final Cup race at Dover in 95. And Joey Logano's scheme has an IndyCar flavor. Jimmy Vassar drove that paint scheme in 2002 with the Shell IndyCar. Now the race is gonna start in under five hours. So our countdown clock for when we go NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series racing. And after we're done tonight, NASCAR America will get you set for Darlington coming up tonight. Well, Team Penske has two drivers there trying to get into the playoffs. One is already in, and Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano is probably going to need a win in one of the final two races. But there are four IndyCar drivers very much in the championship mix, in part thanks to the longest winning streak in a dozen years in IndyCar. Checkered flag, win number 30, it snaps a more than three year drought, and Castro Neves squarely is in the championship hunt. Hit this lap. We have a full course caution. Be the leader once it sorts out. Joseph Newgarden will win the Honda Indy Toronto. Yeah, boy. How about that? And it's green from mid Ohio. Oh, oh Newgarden. A battle for the lead. Newgarden gets by Will Power to take the lead. Joseph Newgarden dominates in mid Ohio. Newgarden chasing his teammate, Will Power. That was a pretty crafty piece of driving. Power is going to go back to back to win at Pocono. <laughs> Good hard racing between the Penske drivers and Pagano stays in front. When are the gloves gonna come off? This is fight night. The two Penske drivers touch and Joseph Newgarden goes back to the front. Joseph Newgarden is going to win for the fourth time in 2017. The next American superstar takes control of the championship. Five straight victories for Team Penske. This man started at Iowa. You've driven better than you have all year. You've only had one finish outside the top 10. You're averaging sixth place. You'd probably win the championship 50 out of the last 60 years, and you're still 42 points behind. Can you win this thing? Absolutely. I mean, no question. It's very competitive, and that's what happens. You know, you got to be consistent, but sometimes you got to win races. And uh, right now, our teammate Joseph did a, is doing a phenomenal job. But with the conditions today, there is a lot of thing in the game, and uh, we just got to be smart when we need to be and be aggressive when we need to be. So Hitachi Chev this morning was really strong. Now let's let's have some fun. Okay, you're 42 and you look like you're 22 and you're and you're racing like you're 22. Are you going to have to get extra aggressive like when you were 22 years old to win this thing? That's what happened. You have PPG pain in your hair, so it looks it looks really good. But uh, you know, again, you, you can't just throw everything away just in the first corner. But if there is an opportunity, we, we're gonna we're gonna have to make it. All right, have a good run, Katie. Thank you. Well, Robin, Sebastian Bourdais was having a lot of fun in morning warm-up when it was nice and wet here at Watkins Glen. Sebastian, what do you like so much more about your car in the wet versus the dry? I don't know. You're the one saying that I was having much fun. You were fast. No, it's two different things. No, it was very treacherous, but, uh, yeah, obviously the car seemed to be responding pretty well. I've, you know, when I, when I have just enough confidence, usually I'm pretty confident and comfortable and quick in the rain. So, yeah, it was tricky, but uh, it worked pretty good for the Delcon Racing number 18. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going in the race. But I really don't know what the weather's going to do. Like some sites say it's going to rain, some sites says it's not. So we don't really know what to do with setup. So 
kind of, yeah, let's Del Coin Racing. We'll just toss a coin and see what happens. Well, and he really is hoping for rain. He told me that earlier today, Kev. He's not really thinking about the championship, obviously, because of the races missed with the crash at Indianapolis. He's working on next year, but there are still seven mathematically alive, really four very much in it. But look at Alexander Rossi. Not worried about the championship, but he does have a great chance at his second career win, and he's with Jan Bikas. And what an amazing day yesterday for Alexander Rossi, scoring his first career IndyCar pole. You told me afterwards that it was gratifying, but also a relief. How much of a relief with mixed conditions, knowing you have a clear view to turn one? Yeah, no, it, it's amazing. It's great. Um, I was very thankful that we were able to accomplish that. Um, we've got a big job ahead of us this afternoon. We don't quite know what the weather conditions are going to be. It looks like it's drying out, but there could be weather coming. So it's a definitely a mixed bag that's going to be a challenge for everyone. But like you said, we're starting in the best position we can to, to have the clearest view, if you will. But you have one big advantage is your team last year had a team test in the wet here. So you've had an opportunity to feel out an Indy car in the wet. Many haven't here, so that should be an advantage. For sure. Um, it was a lot wetter then than it is now. I mean, it was actual proper downpours, if you will. So right now, I think the biggest issue is our, our concern of the tire life of the wets. And when it's these drying kind of mixed conditions, they don't last very long. So then you got to put on slicks, and that becomes a whole other can of worms. So it's going to be it's going to be exciting. It's going to be entertaining, and hopefully uh, we can execute well and be on the right side of it. All right, thank you, Alex. The car starting from the front row from the pole. After making an announcement, he will be back with Andretti Autosport next year with Napa. And Alexander Rossi has had a really strong second season in IndyCar. He has been a factor throughout the entire season and is starting to get some results to show for it here in the second half. Connor Daly had a good race last weekend at Gateway as we take a look at the very busy grid. We're all thinking more about serious things about what's happening in Houston. Remnants of Hurricane Harvey are still impacting very seriously the lives of many. The shop for AJ Foyd Racing is there. Connor Daly and the team trying to do their part to help. We'll get more into that story coming up in just a moment. And we're about 10 or 15 away from racing. Will it be wet? Will it be dry? Stay tuned and find out. To all the people who got affected really badly by uh, RV, we just wanted to tell you that uh, the entire uh, IndyCar community is, uh, is with you, and uh, we sure hope that everything gets better as uh, quickly as possible. To everybody in Houston with the devastation that you guys have seen there, we just uh, all of us here are thinking about you, and uh, hopefully everybody's going to be safe, sound, and, and uh, you know we can we can get everything cleaned up as quick as possible. To all the people in Houston, I know it's been a really hard and tough two weeks. But our hearts, our prayers and thoughts go out to you. I just want to send you guys all my prayers, uh, lots of courage. Uh, this is a tough time, but uh, uh, you guys have to be strong. And, and we think about you very, very much. Um, and we're going to be racing take care of you guys. So be strong and uh, good luck. IndyCar has raced in Houston several times over the last decade plus, and those are the four winners that are entered in today's race at Watkins Glen, and certainly we are all very much thinking and praying for all those heavily impacted by Hurricane Harvey. A.J. Foyt's team is based in the Houston area. They're trying to do their part. Katie Hargett has more. And Kevin Houston is also the home of Supertex. AJ Foyt himself, his shop based in just outside of downtown Houston in Waller, Texas. I talked to the team earlier, and luckily the shop and AJ's property are all okay. They only had one team member that suffered damage to his home, and he was he was home in order to deal with that. And AJ Foyt Racing has supplied all the teams with this Race for Houston sticker that you see. So the entire Verizon IndyCar Series field will be running that today. They've also made these T-shirts, and you can buy those here on site at the IndyCar merchandise tent. Or or you can also buy them online at IndyCar.com. And we have drivers also pitching in to help the Houston community. Graham Rahal and James Hinchcliffe will also be donating their winnings. Jan. And Katie, of course, with the A.J. Foyt Racing Team, it's interesting that the team is split. Yes, their home base is Waller, Texas, near Houston. But for the effort for Connor Daly, it's actually based out of Indianapolis. Now, I know the plan, Connor, was always to go to Indianapolis anyway. But with the floods in the Houston area, in a way, you were able to play host to the rest of the team, and that worked in your favor, thankfully. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I, I don't mind having the two bases. I think it's worked out really well for us, uh, better than people thought it would, for sure. Um, you know, the team's done a great job in preparation, uh, you know, even if they have two home bases. So it's, uh, it's nice to have that indie base, but obviously we're thinking about everyone in Houston, for sure. This morning you had an opportunity to try these wet conditions. You said you tried the dry setup, your teammate, Carlos, tried the wet setup so 
now we have a mixed bag. Which one do you go with? Yeah, I mean, that's the question. I mean, who's uh, who's re-engineering their entire weekend uh, on the grid before the race? I mean, it, it's exciting, though. I like these conditions. I think uh, it provides a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities. So I think we've gone with just sort of right in the middle. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I really want to win this race. I mean, this team has done a great job uh, the last couple weeks, so we've got a lot of great momentum, um, two good cars. So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hoping there's something we can take advantage of, but it'll be uh, quite an interesting day. Of course, momentum from last race, but also momentum from here. Last year, he finished in fourth spot. Kevin? Really good run last year and last week as well. Definitely some momentum for the A.J. Foyt team, and they are thinking of their fellow Texans and there are ways that you can help, like we've talked about, through the Foyt team, or just simply you can donate online to help Harvey victims at redcross.org or text Harvey to 90999 to give $10. Do what you can to help all of those that are severely impacted. Well, very serious stuff, but this is the entertainment part of things, <laughs> and this will be our little diversion for the day. So let's go down to the grid and get closer and closer to race time. That's where we find Robin Miller. Cold race day here, Kevin, and uh, it's going to be a cold grid run. That was my, that was Michael Andretti talking to the Honda guy, Art Sincere. Ryan Hunter Ray, live television, brother. How are you? Pretty good, you? Now, I is important because it's a race, but even next year, looking forward, you got Honda back, and that's what you wanted because you're going to have the same arrow kits next year. Fired up? Absolutely. Looking forward to the, uh, the opportunity next year with a new car, new challenges, and uh, definitely ready to send the arrow kit uh, era off into the distance. Off into the distance. Yeah. All right, have a good race. All right. Now, you know, where's old Graham Rahal? There he is. See, they can they can run, but they can't hide. Young Rahal, I'm not going to trip. Don't I'm make fun of the elderly. You. All right. If you can win today and your wife can win tomorrow in the Nationals, what a great weekend. It would be. It'd be a storybook uh, weekend for us, for sure. Um, you know, I just hope here we can uh, we can have a really good run. Honestly, we've we've been fast all weekend. The car's just been extremely edgy, very loose, and so uh, this morning it was all right. You know, so we'll see. It's going to be this is going to be a tricky day for everybody. Anyway, I don't. Who knows what's going to happen? You're young and brave and edgy. You'll be fine. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. We go by these guys. They they got a lot of air time. What do we think happened to old Connor Daly? We did him already. That's right. We did him. We did him. All right. Where'd Spencer Pickett go? I don't know. That's the one to pee. Next year, two cars. You got your drivers figured out yet? Some of them. Would you share it with um, NBC and Robin Miller? Yeah, I'm, I'm still driving. You're still driving. That's I'm good. Driving. And Spencer Pickett might still have a chance? Uh, they both have a chance. They both have a chance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now, I gotta tell you folks, there's Connor. Hey, are you gonna use the chrome horn? Uh, I believe Paul Tracy calls it the side horn. So, All right, yeah, the why side not? horn. Let's go. Good luck, another good race. Kevin Lee, back to you, buddy. All right, thank you, Robin. Drivers are getting ready. Gotta leave them alone. It's about time to go racing in just a moment. We've heard some of the thoughts so far, but this is a very unique, bad, fast layout at Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen, glad uh, that one's back on the schedule. One of the classic old school American tracks that we are very lucky to be racing at. One of the icons and history of motor racing. Watkins Glen is just fast. Uh, definitely a big eye opener. That's the highest commitment track we have now. A ridiculous amount of grip. Getting through the bus stop there, just watching cars this last year going through the bus stop was like, oh my God, like we're, we have to go back out and do that now? Like we're doing that on the racetrack? That place, the way it flows, the amount of grip it has now with the new pavement, it, it is like a roller coaster. You're constantly on the edge of your seat. My neck gets worn out around that place. I can't keep my neck up for the entire race. I don't know how many drivers I heard use the phrase high commitment this weekend. It definitely is here at Watkins Glen. You're watching IndyCar Live brought to you by Verizon. Go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. All right, I'm hustling to the grid. Lee Diffie is here with PT and T-Bell next. Watkins Glen International, one of the great road courses in North America, and it's another playground for Scott Dixon. The pole sitter looks to win for a fourth time at the Glen. Here we go! Dixon has dominated the whole weekend, really untouchable. There's some wheel-to-wheel -wheel action and a crash. big crash. Graham Rahal, I believe. 
And as Kimball came off the corner, I think he clipped Ray Hall. Scott Dixon, the pole sitter, is still out in front. This is Scott Dixon's race to lose. Oh, willpower! Big one! An issue again involving Charlie Kimball. That car is destroyed, and that's the end of the day, and it might be the end of the championship for Hauer. Nobody has anything today for Scott Dixon. What an incredible job to just dominate. He wins for the fourth time at Watkins Glen. And it's for exactly drives like that, the reason that Ganassi's Scott Dixon is the favorite here today, trying for a fifth win at Watkins Glen. Hey folks, Lee Diffie doing the double today, F1 and IndyCar. Great to be back with my old mates Paul Tracy and Townsend Bell. Time to get things going, guys, and we start right at the very top with Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader, and some really decisive moves over the last few races. Let's show you the tape and let's remind you how determined this man is to be a winner, to be a champion. Paul, let's start at mid-Ohio. Well, since, o since Iowa, he's been an absolute savage on track, scoring more points than anybody. His moves have been decisive but Will Power had him covered, Townsend, Will at Pocono. Power. He came back right here with a very clever defensive move to take the win at Pocono, and then this was gateway. Look at Newgarden kicking the door open. No mercy whatsoever. Pagano really upset as Joseph Newgarden has that million-dollar smile that looks like a guy who's marching his way towards a championship but Lee would have to take some kind of outside force, it seems, to deter his progress. That could come in about 45 minutes in the way of weather. There is weather approaching, and that throws a huge curveball for Newgarden. As you see the radar here, that big blob off to the west that's moving in could wreak havoc on Newgarden's rhythm and consistency in points because you never know. When do you have to take wets? When do you take dries? What do some of the wild cards that have no championship hopes do in conditions like this? Paul, let's go back and talk about championship leader Joseph Newgarden. He is no longer that smiley, likable kid from Tennessee. He's now a Penske man. You know what that feels like. And he's stomping his foot down saying, I'm here to be a champion. Well, I'll tell you what, we sat down with Roger last week and I asked him, what do you think of this kid? He goes, he has integrated himself into the team better than any driver he can remember in history. He has taken charge of what's going on on the team. He's in the shop every day. He's with his crew. He's talking with his guys. He's working out with the team. And right now, he's the guy to beat. Let's show you the grid, at least the first several rows, just to show you an interesting juxtaposition. And what I mean by that is guys in the championship hunt and guys with nothing to lose. Nothing to lose at all with very fast race cars. Look right up front, Scott Dixon, championship contender. Rossi, very fast in the wet right next to him. New Garden Road 2. And then Sato, the wild thing, starting next to him, also with a fast car. Charlie Kimball, way down in the points, right next to Castro Neves. So there is drama all the way through as we look back to last year. And this is what I'm talking about down in turn one. Here's Charlie Kimball and Graham Rahal disputing real estate. Rahal with a massive shunt. And then later on, similar, Charlie Kimball again with Will Power up the back straightaway. And that just goes to show that even if you're in a championship battle, there's several other drivers like Takuma Sato here in Texas who gets crazy with Scott Dixon and takes him out earlier this year. So, so many things can happen. Paul, when you're a championship contender and you know you've got guys around you with nothing to lose, does it change your mindset? Uh, I think right now, if you want to win this championship, you got to win. And Newgarden knows, hey, I got, I'm going to win to win this championship, but so did the top four other guys. So they're all going for it. Remember, mathematically, there are still eight drivers who can win this title, but realistically, it's about a handful. And today will play a pivotal role in it. Thanks so much for watching IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. When we come back to the world-famous Glen, it's time to go racing. Two races left on this championship. Who's going to do it today? You'll find out next. Mike Knight at Gateway and Joseph Newgarden. He's got to run. Oh, he's stuffing it in. Oh, oh my God. No pressure. Yes. Good job, boys. Joseph Newgarden is just signaling to not only his teammates, but the rest of the field. This is my championship, forget about it. I'm grabbing the bull by the horns.
first season with Team Penske, Joseph Newgarden joined a trio of drivers that shared two season titles and 63 wins. But the Penske rookie has taken charge, winning three of the last four races and grabbing the points lead with just two races remaining from a season championship. Watkins Glen provides the next challenge for the Nashville native to go big in the Empire State. But never count out Scott Dixon. The Ganassi driver sits second in the points and returns today to a track where he's won a record four times. of 17 races at the 2017 Horizon IndyCar Series as we welcome you to our coverage here on your home of motorsport on NBCSN. This is the IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen, where weather will be a talking point. We'll touch more on that in a moment. Right now, let's head trackside for the command. Watkins Glen race fans, are you ready? It's time for those most famous words in all of sports. Please welcome New York State Senator for the 50th District, Tom O'Meara, as he gives a command. Drivers, start your engines! Before we get rolling, let's head down to pit lane one last time and kicking things off, Kevin Lee. Kev? Well, with just two races remaining, Lee, everyone is talking about the championship, and it would seem like Joseph Newgard, with three wins in the last four, might be in control. But think about it this way. He starts third, and up ahead of him is Scott Dixon. If Dixon were to win today, he could control the championship with bonus points. Newgard can finish second in the final two and still not win the title. So watch the run into turn one, Jan. And Kevin, Elio Castro Neves set to go. He knows that the last race at Gateway, that was a big loss of points for him. He feels that by stalling in the pits, he lost 20 championship points. He now is 42 back, and he's going to be on the hunt. Katie? John, Will Power has been the teammate that Newgarden just can't shake this season. They battled in mid-Ohio, then they switched to lead at Pocono, but this week is a little bit of a different story. Will Power fist in the Firestone Fast Six. He's going to have to work his way up to his teammates from eighth. He's going to need a miracle to beat them at their own game today in order to keep his championship hopes alive. Robin? Well, let me do this. Simon Pagano has been the model of consistency this year. His average start is fifth. His average finish is fifth. He's had four podiums, a victory. He's been as consistent as you can be, and he's 43 points out of the lead in fourth place. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. No more playing it safe. No more I'm just going to finish in the top four. He's got to win some races. He's got to get aggressive. He knows it. He starts ninth today, so keep your eye on car number one. And Robert. Kevin? I mean, Lee, sorry. He loves this place, he really does, and I think Pagano will be a contender today. It's time to take a closer look at this 3.37 mile historic Watkins Glen track. T-Bell, take us around. Well, we're here West Central New York, and turn one at Watkins Glen is very fast, but it also offers a passing opportunity but you can't go four wide here as we see a replay from last year. Several cars getting turned around on the first lap and that exit curb is big, it's wide and you can use it. There are no track limits here by the rules this weekend. As we get to the inner loop, there's a ton of curbing that you need to use for a quick lap time, but it has been raining and water can sit in the grooves of the curb. This was Friday practice. Max Chilton taking a little too much of that real estate. And then this is the boot. Big entry speed coming into the toe, which is a downhill entry and then a very steep uphill arcing 180 degree corner. We're looking at turn nine and off camber left hander. This was Hinchcliffe in turn eight. A little too early on the throttle, didn't hit anything. Set, uh, Danny Sullivan style there. And then this is Graham Rahal. And this is the trickiest corner because every other corner on the track is cambered, it's fast, but that one is slightly off camber. A lap around here is huge commitment, physically very demanding. Looking at the track as we're going around here, what we have is really Townsend worst case scenario. It's too dry for these rain tires and not, or too wet for the for the rain tires and too dry for the for the slicks. 
So, we congratulate once again Alexander Rossi on his first IndyCar career pole position. Starts alongside the King here at Watkins Glen. That's going to be an interesting matchup. And then you weave your way back. We showed you this a little earlier in IndyCar Live. Those in the title hunt, those with nothing, absolutely nothing to lose, who can go for it for a good end of season result. Let's continue through the grid. Two Penske's, two Ganassi's, two Andretti's in the first three rows. Further back, it looks something similar. Sebastian Bourdais in the 18 car coming off that huge accident. Indy has recovered so well. His pace is very strong. And I think if it gets wet, Bourdais could pull off a real surprise win today. Watch out for Connor Daly. He had a really good warm up. He's going with a hybrid setup, kind of wet dry. Tony Kanon was good at the warm up, and Jack Harvey making his first start did a nice job qualifying. Looking further back, Marco Andretti and J.R. Hildebrand and Max Schilt, all three of them have been fast at other points this year on the calendar. What can they do from the last few rows? So there you go. Paul touched on the track conditions. You can see that wet drying, but for the most part, this Watkins Glen track is predominantly dry. That's going to be interesting. All being forced to start on these wet weather tyres because the race being declared a wet start. Well, in the race this morning, or practice this morning on the onboards. Jack Harvey gives us this view with thanks to Arrow. We've got plenty of other onboards for you today during this 60 lap or two hour timed race. With thanks to NTT Data, this is Tony Kanan's view aboard the Ganassi machine. With thanks to Lucas Oil. The mayor of Hinchtown, James Hinchcliffe, will give us this point of view, which is kind of cool. We've been enjoying that all weekend long. Graham Rahal, with thanks to United Rentals, will give us this viewpoint. And there's going to be plenty going on here today. And the points leader, the Verizon on board with Joseph Newgarden in the number two Penske, Penske Chevrolet. And the Verizon streaming car today is the defending race winner. It's Scott Dixon in the number nine machine and you can go inside IndyCar all season long download IndyCar mobile only from Verizon PT get back to what you're saying well this morning in warm-up it was much wetter than it is now Townsend and the tires came apart basically in three to four laps we got a nice little wet spot right there you see the guys are trying to get those tires wet but this is the worst case scenario for these tires. I think you're gonna see guys pit right away. If it was the driver's choice, they would all be on slicks right now. This is effectively a dry racetrack and any little moisture that you see on the racing line will disappear quickly. And these rain tires are absolutely gonna get shredded within two to three laps. Yes, and that's what we saw, as you have mentioned, in the morning practice. And there was a lot more water on the track in practice. So after one lap, they'll probably be showing lots of signs of wear. But by the regulations, you have to take the green, go by the pits, and then the next time around is the first opportunity legally you can change those tires. But then after that, the whole red, black, Firestone alternate primary, that's out the window. Don't need that today. Oh, boy, this is going to be a scramble. This is going to be fascinating. Get ready. It's the IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen. Alexander Rossi starting on the pole position for the first time in his IndyCar career. And Dixon determined to reduce that 31-point deficit he has to Joseph Newgarden at the top of this championship. Everybody starting on wet weather tyres, but they won't be on them for very long. Coming on to the front straight here at the Glen, it's time to bring the action. Green, 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 green. Good start, Newgarden. Look at him on the inside. Three wide. Newgarden locks up. Can he keep it intact? He does, but here comes Rossi. The pole man retakes the lead. Look at the field spread out. No track limits. You can go anywhere you want as long as you can hang on to it. Rossi has the point through the S's. I thought Newgarden made a brilliant move. He just couldn't hang on to the exit. Sato up to second. Will Power and Simon Pagino, the teammates together. They're scrambling, trying to get the best line, Paul, into the inner loop for the first time. Well, you're not going to get through here three abreast like these guys are trying in the back. Will Power and his teammates side by side. But look at Rossi. He has stretched out. And Newgarden coming back on Sato again. Good work there from Scott Dixon as well. Newgarden back to third, then Sato. Here comes Charlie Kimball up into the mix in the green and black car. And those rain tires, I'm sure, already are begging for relief. This is such high G-forces in the corner, and the tires are going to overheat very quickly. Elio Castro Neves ahead of Ryan Hunter Ray. They climb the hill out of the boot, the toe of the boot, stretch their legs. Here comes Elio. Elio makes a move on Sato. Ryan Hunter Ray pops out, gets Sato as well. There's Graham Rahal now, the next car up on Takuma Sato. Sato's got damage. He's Look got at how problem. slow he's going now. 
He's got a big problem. Sato is just flailing. Massive understeer, it looks like, from Sato. And here, here we see the difference in setup. Some people opting for full wet, like Tony Kanan told us. Some people for dry setup. Yes. Rossi comes to pit lane. Come, everybody's coming. Be we'll have to be careful when we release you. And guys, no engine power is what I'm hearing for Takuma Sato as everyone comes down pit road to get on the slicks. Busy pit lane. If it was me, I would have taken another lap and had an open pit, but they're all in. Only a couple of guys have stayed out. Looks like Max Chilton and J.R. Hildebrand. Now, what's amazing about these pit stops is they will not need any fuel, so you'll see how quickly you see a wing change for Alexander Rossi, but they've got to be so careful as some are feeding in and some are feeding out. Alexander Rossi beat everybody out there. Joseph Newgard, Nelio Castro, Neves, Ryan Honore, and then a drag race. Charlie Kimmel beat Scott Dixon out, so Dixon lost quite a few spots. Newgarden had to wait on his teammate Power to get in the box. I think he might have lost a couple positions. He had to sit and hold, and he was in the clutches of a group of cars that came up. But here's the two guys that stayed out. They're going to pit next, and they will have a wide open pit, so there'll be a lot less congestion for them. Let's take you back and show you that first stop and watch Joseph Newgarden in relation to teammate Will Power. We see Joseph pulling the pit right here. He's right here, and then you're going to see his teammate. He's ready to go here in a second, and his teammate comes into the pits right here. And then he released him to go, but he lost a couple positions. It was not a productive stop either for the nine of Scott Dixon. No, a lot of congestion, but look at this. That's Castro Neves has already caught Alexander Rossi, so a terrific outlap for Castro Neves as Rossi's trying to get tire temperature, and that's why Castro Neves is on reds, the softer compound. It'll take Rossi two more laps to get temperature. This is where you have to be careful on slicks. Watch Rossi and Castro Neves. They're going to hit a big damp spot right there, and Whoa. that is treacherous. Whoa, here look comes Elio. Look at the traction Castro Neves has. Inside line, Castro Neves gets it. Charlie Kimball is, is trying to hustle that car, trying to find some traction. Everybody getting squirrely. Marco Andretti hanging onto it. So Piggott pulls in very slowly. He must have a problem there. I think that might be Hildebrand, who's Hildebrand, coming off Hildebrand wet. Hildebrand and Chilton were the only two that did not stop. So they've hit pit, pit lane. So from sixth to first in one lap, wets to dries, Castro Neves in the lead, chased by Rossi and his teammate Newgard. And Dixon is down to eighth. And Rossi's on push to pass there. And I think Rossi is in really good shape here. Those Firestone Reds are gonna be good, but not for that long. The Blacks will really be the tire to have. As long as it stays dry here for Rossi, he should be able to, to continue to make ground on Castro Neves and eventually get by, but Castro Neves will make it tough. And now Newgarden has caught up to these two. They certainly came in quick. The Reds came in fast. He had way better traction than Rossi on the outlap. But as we see Newgarden, he's chasing down as well. And so interesting when you talk about that tire battle, and I think in particular when you see Alexander Rossi, who chose to go with brand new sticker black primaries. Remember, Castro Neves did not like his car at all yesterday on the primary, so in some respects they were forced to go under the reds. But I think here, for Joseph Newgarden on the reds and also for Castro Neves, I like that call. The conditions are tricky right now. Why not go with the softer tires, Kevin? mentioned Takuma Sato had to come in because he had a power problem. He stayed in the pits for a minute, went back out. They're still trying to diagnose it, but he's just been told by Ziggy Harkis on the radio, it's a wastegate problem. We're trying to work on it, but stay out for now. And one of the Ed Carpenter cars is slow right now, and that's Spencer Piggott. Not sure if he spun on that very wet section of turn nine, but he's back underway. And that turn nine section, Townsend, is exactly the reason why race control declared it a wet start. Here's the picket incident. Well, here's the issue. You're on a perfectly dry racing line, and then you come to this section where it's a little bit off camber and very difficult to see the track surface. Nice job from Pickett to keep it off the wall. I raced here two months ago in sports cars. It was the exact same issue. That's the last spot on the track to drive. Let's take you back and have a look at the start of the race. Watch the orange and white car. Championship leader Joseph Newgarden on the inside. Locked it up and just lost it there. Scott Dixon went backwards off the start. He got overtaken by Takuma Sato. And then Charlie Kimball, his teammate, was starting to hassle him as well as they climbed the hill. It was good going from Takuma Sato early on. Watch on board with Newgarden. 
That initial brake application just overloaded the fronts. I think he did a great job to make the corner. Just gets on the exit curb as Rossi has the power on the clean part of the track. It's a perfect over-under mover by, over by Rossi. He just tucked underneath, got the drive off the corner as Newgarden was on the curb slipping and sliding. But I'm really surprised how conservative Dixon was on that start. Race leader, Elio Castro Neves, to the tune of about one and a half seconds. So it's a really positive opening stanza. However, the guy on the move is Simon Pagano. He is up six places from his original starting spot. Keep your eye on that Menards machine for Team Penske. It's a crucial day for Simon to score ball and to score big. Another guy on the move is Ryan Hunter Ray in a terrible warm up session in, in the rain this morning. He's going to get get some pressure here going up the hill from whoever was behind him right there. But look at this, it got to Dixon gonna make a move right here to the outside, forces him to the outside. Hunter Ray on the button, try to defend. Hunter Ray on the harder black compound. Dixon on the softer reds. Exiting the inner loop. Dixon's been the fastest man by far all week and he's had a bad first two laps. He's fallen back now to fourth. So he's gonna start marching forward and take control of the weekend again. So up and running here at the Glen. Racing lap five of 60. By the way, in case weather does come into play today, it's the 60 laps or two hours, whatever comes first. Just a quick reminder that you can watch every IndyCar on NBC Race Online on tablet and connected TVs as well with the NBC Sports app. If this is not in your software arsenal, it needs to be. Download the app or find out more at NBCSports.com. As we welcome you back to the Glen, I know watching non-stop, you didn't miss a thing, you saw it there. And James Hinchcliffe, unfortunately, from the Schmidt-Peterson machine has run into some significant problems. Needed to be towed back to pit lane. Sounded like on the radio he did an upshift and then it did a downshift on its own. We'll, we'll get a radio here and an in-car. Down to second gear. Oh, that's no good. That's no good for the motor either when it over revs like that because there's no, no control. That was on the upshift from second to third, and you could see on the indicator it went to first. Yeah, copy. We'll see if we can get it towed back. Uh, it looks like there's some sort of issue with the gear stack. Um, if we get it back here, we'll see what we can do. Copy. And what he was describing was when he went to go to fourth gear, it selected first gear. That's why it sounded oh. as bad as it did. And they are in the process right now of trying to replace the gear stack. They can basically take out all the gears and replace them. Now, at a long racetrack like this, it's possible you could do it in a lap or two. This is not something that will get him back into necessarily contention. But with a championship and with learning here at this kind of track, they're going to try and get a gear stack in, see if they can fix this issue and get him underway. But it will be laps down. I think he might have more problems than the gear stack because when it came to a rest, it puffed a big cloud of smoke out of it as well. You see that tailpipe got has smoke and that was some really high revs. There's not a whole lot that scares you race car drivers and champions, but when that happens, that even gives you a jolt, doesn't it? Well, and if it did go into first gear from third or fourth, whatever it was, it can spin the motor way faster than the engine was designed to, to handle. So, bunch of issues there, unfortunately, for Hinchcliffe as we see what looks to be clear skies for now, Lee. Yeah, beautiful overhead shot there of the Finger Lakes District where we are here in central to upstate New York. And there is the up-to-date radar. We are right in the middle there at Watkins Glen, just a little outside the village, the town of Watkins Glen, up on the hillside. And there's some threatening weather coming. Yeah, you know, to the west, that blob as it's moving across. The question is, does it come north at all, stay on the on its existing latitude? Paul, I'm not a weatherman, but I say there's a chance. Oh, there's always a chance with these mountains here, but I'm, I'm looking at Castro Neves, all the moves he's been making in the first couple laps, you got to think, Lee, that this guy, it's his last two IndyCar races of his career. He hasn't won the championship. Every teammate he's had at P Team Penske over the last 20 years has won a championship. There's got to be some desperation to get it done. hundred percent. And look, it's not ideal, but it's not dire. He's only 42 points back.
from championship leader Joseph Newgarden. Dixon is second and Dixon's 31 back. So Elio is in a good position, but let's see how today plays out. Um, look, this is this is this is really good. I mean, if you look at points as of now, he'd go into the final race. Remember, double points at Sonoma in two weeks' time. If Elio could pull off the win on that position, they finished as they are now. Elio'd only be 24 back. So it's all to play for it. I just can't help but think. What was it, guys? Correct me if I'm wrong. Two, two or three years ago, when we went to Sonoma, and there were four, four guys in the mix. Maybe five. You know, uh, there was Will Power, there was Scott Dixon, there was one Pablo Montoya, Graham Rahal, and Dixon was at the bottom of that order, and nobody was talking about Scott. Those double points on offer, and all of a sudden, there we were crowning Scott Dixon as the new champion. I don't think so anybody, it's wide open. I don't think any of us will make that mistake again because no. year after year, Dixon, despite poor starts to the season, despite challenges with the equipment. He is always a factor, and on these two last racetracks, he is very, very strong. Before getting back to green, let's get a quick word with James. And we heard on the onboard, it sounded really bad when that went in the wrong gear. Yeah, about lap two, I started having problems getting into fourth gear. Uh, it would kind of rev off the limiter. It would skip the gear sometimes. It would clunk in. Uh, so I knew we had a little bit of a problem. And then coming out of, uh, out of turn eight there, top of second, shifted for third, and everything messed up in the gearbox and went down to first gear. And I think there's a pretty big damage to the gearbox and maybe override the engine as well. So it's really too bad. You know, we didn't have the best qualifying. It wasn't the best weekend for us, but we were confident we could, you know, pull something off in the race. Good strategy, smart decisions. So, uh, you know, tough for the electronics guys, but we'll, be, we'll bounce back in snow. How about conditions now, especially turn nine? Is that better now? I mean, turn nine's still the, the trickiest part, for sure. It's the wettest part. But, you know, you could tell from the uh, from the outlaps that it was going to be everyone diving into pit lane in that first lap. So uh, set up a little bit of excitement there for all the crew guys. And who knows, there could be still weather coming. So this race uh, this race might still have some, uh, some things thrown at these guys. All right, sorry you have to enjoy it here from pit lane. Tough one for James Hinchcliffe, who was placed 10th coming into this second to last race ready to go racing again here at watkins glen let's do it Dive's first ready. caution of the race over Dive's ready to go racing his new guard he's right on the back of rossi but a really nice start by castro neves keep your eye on that white and blue ntt data car for scott dixon running fourth can he make any inroads on the guy he's fighting with for the championship rhr ryan hunter ray simon pagino charlie kimball as they climb the s's scott, scott dixon running. is right there on the gearbox of joseph newgard in the orange car dixon in the blue and white Newgarden defends, Dixon to the outside. Tough to go around the outside here, Paul, under the inner loop, but he's already cleared him. Not for him, that's the second time he's done it in this race, so now he has gotten ahead of his championship rival. Now he's got to chase down Castro Neves. Penske, Andretti, Ganassi, three different teams, top three positions. That was done with no push to pass because it's not available yet until after the first lap either, so that was a really nice pass by Scott Dixon. I just can't help but think, as I was watching practice and qualifying yesterday, how good it is to see IndyCar back at Watkins Glen. Of course, the series came back last year after a multi-year absence, but it is terrific. And in the dry, folks, these cars are lapping at over 145 miles an hour average lap speed. They fly around here. They really do. And I know Will Power there in the Verizon number 12 wish he was flying around here a little faster because right now he is buried way down in 13th. And after a disastrous opening lap at Gateway St. Louis last weekend where he crashed on the first corner, Power really needs to make something happen here. Now Bourdais is making a move up the inside of Power. There goes, sorry, that's Ed Jones, Bourdais' teammate. He was on push to pass, too, and was really slow down into the corner. So I don't know if he's got a handling problem or something wrong with his car or a, a full wet setup. He's on push to pass again by himself. So something odd going on here with Will Power. And odd going on for Simon Pagano as well as he had to gather that up just to make the inner loop. I wonder if all these Penske's just banked on a lot more moisture being on the racetrack for the first start because now Connor Daly is all over the back of Pagano and coming very strong. Joseph Newgard, a Penske driver, looks to be perfectly fine on pace up front, but further back, his teammates are struggling a bit. Yeah, I mean, you can do a multitude of options. You can go a dry setup, you can go a partial dry, softer, a uh, little bit less wing, to, you know, soften everything, or go really soft, and those are the options you have. We spoke to Rossi uh, before the race, and he said, no, I'm going full dry setup. That's the way I like to go. Hunter Ray locks up a little bit as uh, 
The car, black and gold, green car took a look down the inside of him. That's Charlie Kimball. And you're talking about, Paul, the different choices you have in setup, and you also said how great a pass that was by Scott Dixon. They chose to go with a little bit of a wet setup, but with less downforce. So if you see cars that have gone, because you want more downforce in the rain, you want less downforce in the dry. So Scott Dixon in particular, as you see some of these Penske's that are buried, my guess is they've gone with a little bit of rain downforce. That slows you on the straightaway and much more difficult to pass. Well, Connor Daly's got a run on, on Pagano right here. He was on push to pass. Kimball and Hunter Ray side by side headed to the inner loop and Charlie Kimball executes that nicely. That's the fight for a top five position and Kimball is there. Charlie Kimball just absolutely pulling away from Hunter Ray. He's had a nice weekend going. Teammates to Scott Dixon. And wouldn't it be great for Dixon if he had a teammate for once up in the mix to in the help, top five to help, to help him out? The opposition in the championship, exactly. Charlie Kimball with just the one IndyCar Series start. Of course, that was last year. And he had a sixth place finish. Look for Charlie to be strong again today, but it's Elio Castro Neves out in front. What a motorsport marathon we're enjoying here on NBCSN. And tonight, the Labor Day weekend tradition returns. It's throwback NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series racing from historic Darlington Raceway. Tonight, 60s, right here on NBCSN. So we kick the day off with Formula One. We've got Verizon IndyCars from the Glen right here, right now. The countdown to Darlington, less than four hours away. It is a super day of motorsport viewing. Three historic racing venues. And today at Monza, got things going. It wasn't the most thrilling race. Certainly this one here is a lot closer. That's for sure. And Elio Castro Neves in control. He's got a lead of over a second over Alexander Rossi who's doing well, but Scott Dixon starting to eat into the uh, deficit there to the Andretti Autosport driver. Joseph Newgarden, Charlie Kimball, that's just top five at the moment. And Lee, I think this is the point where the red softer compound tire should start to degrade and give an advantage to Alexander Rossi, who's on the harder black sidewall tire. The drivers were saying that the black tire they thought was the tire to have for the race. Again, with this being declared a wet race to start, the tire rule is out, so you can run any compound you want. And we'll have to see what Scott Dixon does at the first round of pit stops. His pace, Paul, looks pretty good on the reds. He could be really strong on the blacks. Uh, well, his pace has been really strong all weekend. I think he's got, got his car dialed in really well, and he's probably got better tire management than the other guys on reds. He's eating away a little bit at Rossi, but not enough to really get close to get even try to push to pass. So everybody pitted on lap one to get the wets off the car. We're 13 laps into this stint. We think that a full stint is going to be about 16, 17 laps. So that makes pit stops right around lap 18, 19, 20 in that range. More drama for Takuma Sato. This happened on the opening lap of the race. And perhaps, Kevin, it's the same problem coming back to plague him. Yeah, they've been trying to sort out that wastegate problem. They've been working on it, and there's, at best, it never was going to be good enough. And now Sato is just going to pull over. And that's going to bring us to a full course yellow. And we were within about three laps of a lot of the leaders getting ready to come in. So we'll see if they go ahead and pit now. Well, most certainly, I would think you're going to pit, put on another set of tires. It's going to be a crowded pit lane and a wet pit lane. So it's going to be very, very tricky. Pretty interesting situation for Marco Andretti, who pitted on lap 13, and I would imagine will stay out here and be close to back on the same strategy as the rest of the field. So that could really mix things up. If you're thinking that you've been watching Action at Watkins Glen for a long time and how good the Glen looks as Takuma Sato will be rescued from the whole Metro safety team. You know, since 2010, there's been $54 million in capital investments in facility improvements to this place. It just keeps getting better and better. And even uh, back in 2015, it was a $12 million repave of the racing surface. So never resting on their laurels here at the Glen, and Michael Printup and his team just do a terrific job. It's a beautiful place to come race, and I think what's really cool about Watkins Glen is with all of the investment, it hasn't lost its character. Exactly. It's the same beautiful, 
rhythm, the, 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 the flow, the undulations, the elevations. And so they've really enhanced the, the fan experience, but they haven't lost the character of such a fast and demanding racetrack. So time for the drivers to regroup here, grab a breath, reset, refocus, assess that second run after the conclusion of the first caution. Think about this. Pits are open. They'll come to pit lane on slicks. The question is, is pit lane still wet at all? It could be dicey on the concrete. And that's a good confidence boosting stander and passenger, stanza and passenger racing for Elio Castro Neves. Let's go. Action on pit lane. We start with Katie. And Ryan Hunter Ray will be the first to pull into his pit box on my end of pit lane. He's been battling some terrible understeer in turn one, so he's been using his rear bar to adjust that. Here on pit lane, the crew is going to give him a half a turn of front wing and Firestone Reds. Jan? And this is really interesting because Alexander Rossi, look at that. He's putting on red sidewall alternates, and I can tell you that Dixon is going with black. Kevin? Up front, all the Penske's look like they're going with black, and a lightning quick stop for Elio Castroneves beats out a charging Alexander Rossi. Castroneves maintains the lead. Great stop to Ryan Hunter Ray. Not a great stop for Scott Dixon. He lost two positions again on the pit stop exchange. He made it up, and now he's dropped back again. And Will Power as well. There's the race off pit lane. Elio Castro Neves just got out ahead of Alexander Rossi. So the big winners there, right there. Captain America, Ryan Hunter Ray, and Will Power gaining multiple positions on that stop. Resetting the field. There's been some big winners, big losers off pit road after that last cycle of stops. You see Spencer Piggott at the front of the field, and here is the rescued and returned to Kumasato. Indianapolis 500 champion of this year. Just been having problems since the opening lap of the race. I'm actually surprised that they pulled him back to the pit area because he was so far away from the pits, but uh, he must have pleaded his case and got a toe back. See the engine cover removed. And Sato qualified fourth, had great pace all weekend, but let's look at Will Power's stop here. Left-hand side of your screen. Didn't look like any big issues there. Maybe they got jammed up on the way coming in and lost some time, but he lost five positions on that round. Sorry, gained five gained, positions. Gained five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to think about that too. How big a deal, PT, is it too, with pitting on that side of the, the, the unique nature of, of Watkins Glen pit lane? You, you, you pit and your crew comes from the right-hand side as opposed to typically from the left, and it's also a downhill pit lane. Yeah, well, he's in the prime spot. He's got the number one spot from his qualifying last week, so he had an easy out. The guys who have it tough, like Newgard and Dixon, all these guys have to swing out around somebody and watch the traffic from behind. So Will Power's in a prime spot to get out of the pits nice and cleanly, but we're gonna, I think we're going to go green this time. we got some guys from the back that have moved to the front. First five cars on warm tires. Everybody else will be fighting to get tire temperature that just came off pit lane. Spencer Piggott with that familiar yellow helmet, Max Chilton, and then J.R. Hildebrand set to go back to racing here at Watkins Glen. Let's go. So Piggott, Chilton, Hildebrand, Marco Andretti, and Jack Harvey all out of sequence, those first five cars. How'd you like to be Jack Harvey as we ride on board in the pink car looking out back? You've got all these champions coming at you. His Agarassi. first road course. And Rossi got a nice exit, and he got by Castro Neves. So Get those it. are your effective leaders not on track but in terms of pit sequence as we look out the back of jack harvey's car he's getting a run on him he's going to block rossi up the inside rossi took the softer firestone reds for the restart remember that's where castro neves got rossi was on the flip-flop situation hunter ray has gotten by as well castro neves hunter ray blocks. also on reds so we know now a hundred percent that your initial lap on reds is going to be quicker than on blacks and does that give you enough of an advantage to maintain position as time goes on when the Blacks come into their own? It's not enough. That was evident on that last run with Scott Dixon and with Elio Castro Neves. Here, we're looking back at Alexander Rossi again on Jack Harvey. Nice clean move down the inside. A little bit sideways for Jack Harvey. And Rossi and Hunter Ray are really showing an Andretti 
strength here. Once this cycles through, Rossi and Andre, or sorry, and Hunter Ray will be first and second in this race. They've got to remind themselves that Jack Harvey last pitted on lap 12. So don't take too much of a risk as Hunter Ray goes up the inside because eventually Harvey's going to have to pit anyways. Significant news of the week is that Andretti Autosport staying with Honda for the 2018 racing season. So good stability, good consistency there for the team moving forward. Tony Kanaan trying to do something on Simon Pagano there. Coming up through the S's, let's ride with TK. Double draft here. He's got a lot of straight line speed. He's a little lock up by Bourdais right in front of those guys. So he went really deep, tailed off both of them. And where you have to be careful in side-by-side -side situations in these conditions is the offline driver is in the wet still on slick tires. So it's a lot like marbles late in the race. In this case, it's moisture. Speaking of that, we do continue to monitor the radar. It looks like the cell has moved further south and around. It may just miss Watkins Glen. And Dixon has gotten around New Garden, and New Garden is under threat from Graham Rahal. So in that lap, we missed it. He got him going up into the bus stop. So he has gotten back around. So that is key right there. Turn nine is starting to dry out. Think about this. With Andretti pinning on lap 13, Rossi and Hunter Ray on 15, they all have to make two more stops, we think, under these conditions. Andretti would be legitimately running one, two, and three as Rossi goes up the inside of his teammate, Marco Andretti. But Marco Andretti is legitimately battling for position right now. Let's have a look at Ryan Hunter Ray on Elio Castro Neves. First lap after the end of the caution. Right on board with Newgarden. And I, I agree with what Jan Bika said earlier. I think they've just gone with a lot of downforce expecting rain with Team Penske because the straightaway speed is suffering. And, and uh, Tony Kanaan has gotten by Simon Pagano. So like you said, I think these Penske cars are on high downforce and a lot of these Honda guys are on a kind of a medium downforce setup and they've got good straight line speed. Rossi in the Napa machine for Andretti Autosport is the man on the move. Max Chilton is the next one on his list. Max Chilton's been here all week long. He was testing a car for his dad, an old sports car, a Zytec, I believe. So he's been here driving, testing all week. So good to see him up front in that James Hunt replica helmet it's that he's cool. wearing this weekend. It's a very cool look. I don't know if you can wear that unless you fully embrace the lifestyle. <laughs> A newlywed, a Max newlywed. Chilton is. That's going to be a difficult balance as we look oh. to the race radar. Outside <laughs> race on the right, ahead. radar on the left. Rossi goes for the move to the outside, and he'll check out. And I'm watching that radar very keenly on the left-hand side. There's a big blob coming, guys. I don't think we can miss that. Third of the way through the IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen. And I remind you again that it's the 60 laps or two hours. So whether this race is weather affected, teammate on teammate, Hunter Ray on Andretti. Inside move for Ryan, nicely done. Speaking of, speaking of Andretti, we want to congratulate our dear friend and motor racing icon, Mario Andretti, who received the Cameron Argetsinger Award for his contribution, his outstanding contribution to motorsports earlier this week in a special uh, evening ceremony at the International Motor Racing Research Center here in Watkins Glen. And of course, Cameron Argetsinger, the man, the late Cameron Argetsinger, the gentleman who brought racing to Watkins Glen. Great story, Jan. Uh, and Lee, while we see Alexander Rossi battling on the racetrack, the team is battling to change the entire fuel hose. There was a fuel leak after the last pit stop, so that is the actual fuel probe that was on the car. They have replaced that with a spare. Obviously, that takes a few minutes to undertake. They're changing the rest of the software and the plumbing as we speak. We're trying to see if we see anything on his actual last stop. You can see that the fuel goes in quickly but they did have significant fuel leakage after that pit stop. That's why they're having to change the probe. Obviously, they're hoping they can get this all finished before we get to his next stop. Better hope it doesn't go yellow and they come in right away, but uh, I'm actually surprised, Townsend, that they didn't just have a whole complete hose to replace it with. 
Well, it's a big apparatus to carry around, and with Takuma Sato four laps down, I wonder if at some point the team considers takes it, take his, take his. Yeah. I don't, not sure that you could use your teammate's pit stall, but maybe the equipment for sure. Did you notice the refueler though? He looked, he looked somewhat perplexed, a little bit confused. Tell you what, Rossi, we, I'm so impressed with how he's been running since Toronto. He's just really stepped into another level, and he's done some different stuff in his personal life. He's got new trainer. He's training with the pit fit training with Scott Dixon's guys, and Tony Kanaan uses them. So some changes, a new contract, and man, he's on it. Watching Jack Harvey here trying to hold off Graham Rahal, Charlie Kimball, Sebastian Bourdais. A bunch of fast Hondas all over the back of that rookie driver. Let's ride with Graham Rahal for a moment. See Graham Rahal there using push to pass to draw close enough in turn one so that right here, if I get a good exit, boom, right back on the button. And let me see if I can make the run. He's got to run, but he might get there too soon and have nowhere to go and have to lift out of it. He was on and off of it. See that? He switched it off as he was coming up the hill because he was going to run all over the back of him. And it's a double move. There goes Charlie Kimball as well. Kimball thought about having a run at Ray Hall, but it was too close. Not enough time left before the inner loop. Spencer Piggott technically leads, but he's about to pit. Alexander Rossi, technically your race leader. You saw it in non-stop, could you believe it? The quickest car on track, the guy who just sent the fastest lap of the race, Alexander Rossi, forced to come in and pit an unscheduled pit. Jan Bikas, tell us more. What's the story at Andretti? The situation was we saw that there was some hesitation on the last pit stop, and in fact, they did not get all the fuel. So they had to bring him back in. That's why the team was scrambling so quickly. They did change the entire hose, the fuel probe. You could see that the fueler actually had to open it manually to get it filled this time. That's why it was a 12-second pit stop. But the thing that hurts him so much now, he's way out of sequence because he had to pit so early. And he left the pit box in frustration as well, but sideways out of the box. I would say that if he gets a yellow, he could still make it on one more stop, and he could cycle to the front and, and, and luck back into a good finishing position. But pitting under the green, it's so painful. It feels like it takes forever when you have to do that. Well, that stop did take forever. That was about twice as long as it should have been. Yeah, I wonder if, if, he had, if he had fuel, it should have been a fairly quick stop, tires only, and it was 12 seconds long, which is a lifetime, because we got jilted in. He was the last one really out of sequence, so the order is Ryan Hunter-Ray, Elio Castroneves, Scott Dixon, and then Marco Andretti, who's two laps off sequence compared to the rest of the leading pack, who all pitted on lap 15, Marco pitted on lap 13. Here is Joseph Newgarden on Marco. You can see these guys, they have got too much downforce on that car. He was on the push to pass, and he couldn't even pull alongside the Andretti car, who's probably running the same level of downforce as Rossi, so they're just too draggy. Too draggy for now, but if it rains, Paul, they'll be sitting pretty with everybody else skating around. And you were speculating about what Alexander Rossi could do, and I can tell you that the fueler had to open, we mentioned this earlier, the fueler had to manually open the valves. They could not rely on the hydraulic part of the probe. So the answer is, yes, the car is full of fuel, but that's why it took 12 seconds. They couldn't rely on the normal procedures they'd have with the probe. So we'll see. It's just a matter of waiting and seeing what Alexander Rossi can do if, just if, a third full-course caution comes out in the remainder of this IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen. So Hunter Ray with a healthy four-and-a-half-second lead over Elio Castro-Neves, Scott Dixon, Marco Andretti, Joseph Newgarden. This is the win, if he could get it, that Ryan Hunter Ray has needed for a long time. He's well in command at the moment, but we're not quite halfway through this race just yet. Been a really challenging season for Hunter Ray. The big crash qualifying at Pocono. Here's Marco Andretti. Let's see if Newgarden can finally do it here. Just has a nose up, but no, Marco closes the door. Just not enough straight line speed in that Penske car with the downforce level they're running. 
to really pull by. We see guys on the push to pass, and they're popping out right at the top of the hill and going by when they're on push to pass. So just a little bit too much drag on that car. Charlie Kimball has had a really solid day. Right there on screen, that black and green Ganassi machine. He is ahead of Graham Rahal, Sebastian Bourdais, Tony Canani's teammate, and then Simon Pagino make up the top 10. Will Power running 11th. And Charlie Kimball's team, Chip Ganassi Racing, will be rooting him on hard to get ahead of Joseph Newgarden and help Scott Dixon a bit more in the points as they run right now. Dixon 26 points back. Understand there's a caution has come out somewhere. Well, like you said, this might cycle Rossi back to the yeah. front and get him back on sequence. If everybody else pits now, he's already done his stop two laps ago. Maybe only be two laps out. Yeah, so right. this could put him back in position in the lead again, which is a lucky break for him. Not sure what the yellow is, but it's full course. Two waving yellows at start finish. And Ryan Hunter Ray didn't want to see that. That big lap, the big gap is going to close up. Oh. And there's your yellow. That's Takuma Sato, who was having a number of issues. And I think he might have spun down there. I was just doing a burnout, leaving. It's possible. Because he's up and running again. Of course, Takuma was the cause of the second full course caution when he was stranded out on track now at turn nine. I, my first thought was, oh, he had a, a you know, driveline issue. Something expired there. But I think you're right, Paul. That might just be tire smoke. You know, obviously it was it was an, some type of electronics problem. They more than likely changed the, more than likely changed the steering wheel and reset some things and got going again with the rain. You know, you never get you never know what can happen. The water and the electrical connections. And we've seen it time and time again when when you introduce rain to these cars. Some cars end up having electrical problems. Well, perfect timing for. The Sato spin to help Alexander Rossi. If it was, in fact, a spin, we don't know. But whatever the issue, if it was, in fact, Sato, that would be very conveniently timed for Rossi. What are you saying, Townsend? I'm they, just saying. It's they are very teammates. conveniently timed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have seen it before. It's definitely odd. There's no, nobody's crashed out. Pits are open now, so nobody's crashed out. We're going to see if everybody takes this yellow and it cycles Rossi to the front. But I got to wonder if that was some team tactics there. Well, speaking of team, the Andretti Autosport team on the 28 of Ryan Hunter Ray did a spectacular job last time. Let's see what they can do this time, Katie. And Lee, he had cycled his way into the lead. He is currently on those Firestone Reds as you see him pull into his pit box right now. The team is going to go into Firestone Blacks. He also wants a half a turn of front wing filled up with Sunoco Fuel Beyond. And Katie, the choice for Scott Dixon is new blacks. So it's very interesting to see as it's so tight on your pit road, Kevin. Ryan Hunter Ray is going to beat everybody out. Another good stop for Castro Neves. He gets out second on Firestone Blacks. Then it's Dixon. And side by side, New Carton and Marco Andretti. Marco maintains that position. How'd you like to be a left side tire changer no, on this why? pit lane? Oh my goodness, that's close. There have been some close calls already today. Look at Power again, four spots. So this Penske team is crushing it for Will Power on pit lane. That's nine positions made over the last two stops. Watch this. View from Joseph Newgarden, Marco Andretti up ahead. Bunk. A little chrome horn, no, nothing major. Nice. A little so. bit of Paul Tracy style there. That's just a love tap. No damage. So we've got Rossi and Piggott kind of back on sequence. Piggott's right got on a couple sequence. more laps less than Rossi, but Rossi's back in the game now. Now Chilton who's also in the game, was started at the back in last place. He's now on sequence in third. I have to see what everybody did for tire compound because if you put reds on, I think you're really at a huge advantage on these on these restarts as we've seen already. So looks like Castro Neves is on blacks, Dixon's on blacks. Looking for anybody that might be red sidewall there. So there is Alexander Rossi. He gets that caution that he was hoping for to try and get 
back in the game, so to speak, after such a dominating second stint. And there I think I saw, I think it's Max Chilton and J.R. Hildebrand both gambling on Reds, and I like that call. Nothing to lose here championship-wise. Both these guys need a big result. So take that softer compound and go big on the restart. Max Chilton has loved racing in America. After leaving Formula One, he enjoys the Verizon IndyCar Series. He calls this place his favorite road course in America. And check this out. Ed Carpenter Racing has two cars legitimately in the top four on the same strategy now. One stop to go to the end. Awesome effort from the fuzzy Chevrolet team. Ready to go racing again. End of the third full course caution. Let's go. Familiar side, Alexander right, right, right. Rossi at the front. Rossi's got clear sailing now, and he's got some cars that are definitely nowhere near as quick in terms of pace throughout the weekend. Uh, it's really Castro Neves and Dixon that are back in sixth and seventh that, that can run his pace. So he's got a nice little buffer here for probably the next 15 to 20 laps. This will be Bray Hall working on Joseph Newgarden. And there's the downforce and the drag that Paul's been talking about. Look at Ray Hall just motoring by, no problem on Newgarden. Scott Dixon was able to clear Tony Canaan there. Actually, Marco Andretti, my apologies. So one position gained there for Dixon after the restart. So Rossi, Piggott, Chilton, Hildebrand, Hunter Ray, Castro Neves, back to Dixon, Andretti, Ray Hall, Newgarden, Kimball. That's what your top 10 looks like. Joseph Newgarden's going to get sick very quickly of cars Whoa. just pulling out and overtaking him. And Charlie Kimball runs wide. Well, power slid by. He got off the track on the curb, and then it's wet. Those curbs are still wet, so it shot him off the track. And that's some critical breathing room for Joseph Newgarden. He had the Ganassi team with Kimball battling him, and that Kimball's falling another position back. Now, Newgarden has two teammates. I'm not going to say they're going to race him easy, but it's certainly oh, better to have the there's wall. Kimball into the wall. Last <laughs> turn, exiting turn 11, slap the wall. And his teammate nearly hit the, hit the back of him. As we see, Munoz. Carlos comes down the inside because he had to check up on his teammate. Oh. That was really sketchy. And Munoz got on the wet stuff outside of turn one, and Charlie Kimball is Got his hands full. How much damage has been sustained on that car? He's lost six or seven spots in the in a matter of three corners. That wasn't just a glance either. That was a slap. Bordet on the inside of Connor Daly. And for Charlie Kimball, who was knocking on the door of the top 10, has dropped all the way to 17th place. Rossi in one lap is already almost to a two and a half second lead, so. He's got a, a good breathing room here on Piggott. Watch this. The view from Tony Kanaan to his Ganassi teammate. Bang. And you could see when Kimball hit that exit curb, there was a little puff of moisture. And that's the issue here. The water can sit in those grooves. Watching that replay, it wasn't as big as what I initially thought, but it did not help Charlie Kimball. Meanwhile, Alexander Rossi, your race leader. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by United Rentals, office equipment rental services provider of IndyCar and proud sponsor of Graham Ray Hall. And by TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install, smarter Tire Rack. Back at the Glen, Lee Dippy, Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy with you for the action of this IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen race leader, Alexander Rossi, to the tune of nearly five seconds back to Ed Carpenter Racing, Spencer Piggott, and then Max Chilton. Now, there's a little bit more detail to strategy when you talk about these guys at the top who are slightly off sequence to the majority of the pack. Only slightly, though, as we see Spencer Piggott there running in second. Now, he pat last pitted on lap 23. Dixon. Dixon's got a run on Castro Neves. And, and the question for Piggott, Jan Bikas, is what does he have to do to make it to the end? What does his teammate there, J.R. Hildebrand, who's in fourth, have to do to make it to the end? And Dixon. Well, for Piggott, and to answer your question there, sorry, Paul, was that for Piggott, he has to do major fuel save, and that's why you see such a big gap that he's dropped behind Rossi. And for Hildebrand, I don't think he can do it. He might as well just go for it now. He has an extra stop in his future, unless there's a lot of yellow.
So, time for our Chevrolet driver update. And you see on screen there, young American driver Spencer Pickett, who's doing a really nice job in the fuzzy Chevrolet. And we just spoke about his teammate, uh, J.R. Hildebrand. Elio Castro Neves is featured today. And remember, he is in this Verizon IndyCar Series championship hunt. So, too, his teammate, Joseph Newgarden. So, too, his teammate, Will Power. So, too, his teammate, Simon Pagino in the Penske Fest in this year's championship. It's Scott Dixon who is standing alone and standing up and trying to fight the good fight. Well, it's shaping up so perfectly for a wild finish at Sonoma because right now, Castro Neves has moved himself only 33 points back as they run right now. Scott Dixon would be 23 points back. And again, Sonoma double points on offer as we ride on board with Dixon. And I think this really favors Dixon. If this track stays dry and the track stays green, Scott Dixon could make up several more positions as Hunter Ray goes to the inside of Hildebrand. Well, I gotta think that Dixon will make quick work of Hildebrand on the next lap. He's closed the gap big time. He got by Castro Neves on the previous lap at the bus stop, and he is marching his way forward. And I gotta think that when he gets to his teammate, Chilton, you would think that Chilton would help him out. I don't know. A lot of, lot of talk that Max Chilton probably not back at the Ganassi team next year. So are you driving for yourself? Are you driving for your future? Or are you driving for your team? Well, I mean, it all depends on what his feeling is towards Dixon. Obviously, they're good mates. They hang out together. They go to dinners together. Dixon Whether didn't go to his mad, wedding. Well, well, maybe you're right. <laughs> he did show up. He did fly across the pond to London for the Chilton, the Chilton wedding a few weeks ago. So, so many factors come into this. He's got to get past J.R. Hildebrand and Ryan Hunter Ray before he gets to Chilton, though. Race leader Alexander Rossi continues to stretch his legs. 6.2 seconds out in front now. And things are looking really good for Alexander Rossi. And that caution that he caught, as you were talking about, was perfect timing for Alexander Rossi. Now he's looking good on piece hit sequence. Here's what Rob Edwards told him on the radio. So you and everyone else has to make one more stop now. So we're all doing the same thing from here. And then you need to save fuel as much as you can. That is the same data that I have reviewed. It looks like he has perfect strategy here. He has to save some fuel, but only one more stop. But here's something happened just moments ago. Another radio conversation saying we're going to pit in three laps. Now, that would not make sense for Alexander Rossi. So we're going to go by the earlier. Charlie Kimball's cutting some grass, but it looks like bar that last radio conversation that Rossi's in the driver's seat. Been a little bit of a wild day for Charlie Kimball, hasn't it? Got off to a great start, but in recent laps, starting to unravel just a little bit. We'll see if the driver of the 83, Novo Nordisk machine, can get it back on track for Chip Ganassi. Well, I think the key for Rossi now is to really just to get to that pit window and be the first guy to pit, because we're back on a road course. We've been on ovals the last couple races. You get that pit stop done. If it goes yellow, you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. Remember, though, the delay on the fuel, right? Yes, he 12 did. seconds to fuel the car for Alexander Rossi on the last stop. So he's got to build up a nice cushion and get a nice lead. If it's going to be another long pit stop, having this six-second advantage is definitely going to help. As we watch Spencer Pickett running in second right now, he's been talking about losing the tires a little bit, trying to hang on, but he's one of those not saving right now. They're telling him to go ahead and turn up and run as hard as he can. Now, I'm hearing some other conversations, even those that pitted with everyone else still doing a little bit of saving. The idea is save now so you can race hard later. And as far as the Penske uh, downforce level, I'm hearing a lot of they kind of did the in-between. They went possible wet, possible dry, somewhere in between, Jan. Yes, and I talked about that Alexander Rossi possibly pitting in three laps. The good news is they said on lap 43. So whew, <laughs> that's exactly what they wanted. So Alexander Rossi right now looking good. Hey, Jan, just speaking of fuel, because this did turn into a fuel race uh, last year towards the end with drivers like James Hitchcliffe running out. Are there, are there further amendments and refinements going on at Andretti with that fuel nozzle? Has any, anything happened or are they just going to do it manually again? 
Well, the case is they were trying to restore, I said hydraulic before, it's by air pressure. There's air pressure that opens that nozzle, so they're gonna make an attempt to test that. Here's the problem, Lee, you're only given so much fuel to complete the race. They can't really afford to spill much more, so right now I'll go back and check and see if they think it'll be operational, but the fuel will have to be ready to back that up. Great stuff, thanks, mate. Into the second half of the IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen. It's been a very interesting day for Alexander Rossi. Can he go from pole position to victory lane? We'll find out. You rejoin us right at the right time to see Scott Dixon round up Ryan Hunter-Ray for third place. Good run out of the S's at the top of the hill. The drag race down to the inner loop, and Dixon won out. And let's see how fast he can close the gap to his teammate, Chilton. And if Chilton helps his teammate, the guy that flew across the pond to his <laughs> wedding, Townsend. So he has just overhauled Ryan hunter Ray, and now he's on the back of his teammate. Well, we know he, he went to the wedding, but not sure what Scott Dixon might have said at the wedding. So could go either way or here. Or the quality but... of the gift. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> If Emma, if Emma Scott's wife hears us talking about this, we'll get scolded next time we see her. But we'll see how this shakes out. It's all about gathering as many championship points as possible with one race remaining in Sonoma, California in two weeks' time. This guy we ride with is trying to capture his fifth IndyCar Series title. And as he runs right now, Scott Dixon only 20 points back of the championship lead. And Kevin Lee, we talked about the championship implications. If Dixon's within 20 going to Sonoma, what does that mean for Joseph Newgard? I think what we looked at is that he can lose control of this championship. We felt like he was in so much control, but 31 is not that much when you're talking about double points. It's, it's simply this. If your lead is less than, say, 23, well, then you're in a position where if someone like Scott Dixon wins the race and wins all the bonus points, then you can even finish second and not win the championship. And that's where Dixon is at right now. If it finished this way, if Dixon took the bonus points next year and won the race, he would win the championship no matter what Joseph Newgarden did next weekend we, or we, that, two we, weeks after. We may even get to see Chip Ganassi crowd surf again. <laughs> <laughs> what we have now is we have Newgarden with power, who's only a half a second behind him, do they run in formation? Does power get the orders now? Hey, Newgarden, we need to run run in position here, or does he have an opportunity to pass Newgarden and close that gap for Dixon even more? I don't think he does get the orders. They're, they're both championship contenders, right? Yes, one's a leader, one's a chaser, but I don't think they do. I don't think the captain would allow that. Well, and I wonder if the message might be relayed to Newgarden. Hey, Dixon, as he runs right now in, in, in second, sorry, third, you know, start turning up the wick here. We need to we need to earn points here. You can't just cruise. Yeah, there he is. This is Joseph Newgarden. Where is Will Power? Right, right there. Right there on his tailpipe. So he's there. No, no pressure from anybody behind Will Power. So Marco Andretti has gotten by Newgarden. Marco having a good day. He was off strategy. Started way, way in the back and took took that alternate strategy. He's inside the top seven, which would be a great result for him. And remember earlier, we saw Newgarden trying to make moves on Marco Andretti with the push to pass, but he had too much drag. Newgarden did go in for kind of the rain hybrid setup. So I'm sure right now they're regretting the gamble to expect rain on the track. got to think just because we all know him so well will power just how badly he beat himself up during this week after what went down at gateway spinning on the first lap of the race crashing and just kissing goodbye so many championship points well and i'm thinking that will power is probably remembering mid ohio earlier but let's go back and apparently this is off twitter a fan has posted this video as takuma sato loops it in the toe and then has to go counter course and 180 the car. Now Rossi is in, 18 laps to go. And he comes in, Jan, with a 12-second advantage over Max Chilton in second, and Chilton is in. Yes, and the pit delta, meaning the time he will lose here is 30 seconds if your fuel flows properly. I've been assured by the team, Ron Edwards says, the fuel probe is working properly. It should be disengaged right about here. Yes, it is. And we for Alexander Rossi. Max Chilton on pit lane means that Scott Dixon is now in the lead, and it's a long stop for Max Chilton, nearly 10 seconds, as they got it filled all the way up with Sunoco fuel. Well, Scott Dixon's got a clear road and about three, maybe four laps more fuels. We've got 
some pressure here. Wow, that was a tricky pass by Pagano, but Scott Dixon right now, if he wants to close this gap, he has got to lay down some four qualifying laps to close the distance on Rossi. And Rossi has to work furiously here to get tire temperature. Can't afford to lose more spots. Rossi has come back out on track in 13th place. New race leader, this guy, the four-time winner here at the Glen, Scott Dixon. And the entire field is making pit stops already. Ryan Hunter Ray just choosing the Firestone Blacks for this final stint, Jan. And Scott Dixon is getting a full load of Sunoco, and he's going with Snicker Blacks. Leo Castroneves has an easy out, but it's a longer stop for Castroneves. I think they had to put it up on the jack again. The 98, and Rossi goes by Hunter Ray, and then Castroneves as well. I got screened out a little bit, but it seemed a little bit longer for Castroneves. Alexander Rossi flew by with a big gap, and that is Castroneves violating the pit exit rule, I think, Paul. Remind me what we heard from Brian Barnhart. I think you can't, you have to stay all the way below that yellow line. Yeah, he definitely popped out. Cast, or as we see Graham Rahal now has a run up at the top of the hill. He definitely popped out and went across that yellow line and threw like a hole in the track, it looked like, so. Let's show you. Car in question, driver in question. Elio Castro Neves, this goes, Oh, yeah. right. Wow. Remember, there's actually a line here, and the transponder has to clear that. But I think if you go over the line that early, for sure that's going to be under review. So we'll have to see how race control treats that. It will be under review, but Townsend, he did, just like you circled there. He caught the line. See, he's outside the line there, but he got over the transponder. And the <laughs> way that race control has done it this year, we will only officiate on the transponder. I think he's clean. <laughs> but isn't the point of the transponder to keep people from going <laughs> over the line? <laughs> that was a little awkward, and it could be the ultimate escape for Elio Castro Neves. So if you Plus. cycle this back around, PT, this is looking very strong for Alexander Rossi. Let's go down to the pits. Will Power has the pit out location. He squeezes around Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader in the orange and white car. He's going to have to get around. Will Power coming out. Final stop for the two Team Penske cars. And Joseph Newgarden a drag race to the line, and now we watch how they blend in. Joseph Newgarden totally overcooked his pit entry. Oh, he got the same oh. thing. Oh, he gets hit hard by Sebastian Bourdais. The championship leader is in huge trouble. Hit They're all off, hitting yeah. the hit pit lane off. exit wall. He hit the pit lane exit wall. Wow. And was on the brakes and got clobbered. Uh, Marco Andretti came in and did the exact same thing. He slid wide and hit the pit lane exit wall, and this is massive damage. I wonder if there's water what on the track. There? or just cold tires. It was Tim Sindrick, president of Penske Racing. Team Penske who asked the question, what happened there? Let's have a look from above. So Will Power raced him hard off pit road, but what happens to the championship leader? He just understeered into the into the grass, hit the wall, and then the next car came along and hit him. And if we stay on this shot, watch Marco come hopefully into the picture and does exactly the same thing. You could see a little puff of right front smoke on all three of these cars. We're locking right fronts. Remember, you come off the pit speed limit or you get all the acceleration and we'll watch on board. Listen to Newgarden. You don't realize coming right, down here, right. it's very, very downhill. He's locked up. The tire's locked up going in and just, oh, big hit from watch behind. Watch that line, watch that line. Oh. And Newgarden's very lucky he Is didn't get there? completely walloped as they went on. Look at all these guys. They're in the head racing out. line. Up and head out. So that's, that was, it wasn't was Marco, that was Kanan that hit the wall. His car looks very similar. So this is very, very steep downhill. It's very deceiving. He just locked it up. And remember, it was Newgarden last week at Gateway swooping across the nose of Power who crashed on the opening yeah, lap. A, now Newgarden has the mistake. It's a very, very similar pit exit to like getting out of the pits in Daytona. You yes. know, the night, and you come in there and you think, oh, I'm not going very fast, and you end up clobbering the Marco. And if you think correctly about that, PT, guess who did it? It happens to the best of them. Jeff Gordon did it at night, coming off pit road around that 180 degree turn in the Rolex 24 at Daytona. He's so here comes a very wounded Penske Chevrolet. Damage all over, front wings broken, rear wings broken. You gotta think the toe's out on it. That was a hard hit on Careful the left-hand side. Here. Careful stopping here. And he's entering a closed pit. 
And you can hear Tim Sendrick saying, be very careful stopping. They thought a tire was also down. So what they're going to do first is they're going to change the rear wing assembly, change four tires, and then they're going to decide whether the car is well enough to continue. He slapped that guardrail pretty good, but they're eventually going to have to assess suspension and other issues with this car. What a swing, potentially, for the championship leader with just one more race to go after this. It is huge. This is monstrous as far as the scope of the championship is concerned. Tires here, guys. Get the tires. The driver who has won three of the last four races and who came into this race with a 31-point advantage Go ahead. may just end today and leave Watkins Glen, New York with a single-digit points lead. Front wing end plate looks like it's definitely been hit hard and potentially broken. Now, Newgarden goes on to Reds See that with wing end maybe plate. 14, 13 laps to go. And there's some damage to the car, but if it's in reasonable enough shape, it's going to be fun to watch Newgarden. The front wing is still damaged. Question is, do they keep him out, or are they going to just try to stay on the lead lap and come Something back to pit as well. On this side over here, is something damaged right there as well. So it's uh, pieces flying off the car. So he's got damage somehow on both sides of the car to fix. He's going to have to come in and check that over again, which is going to put him further down. And right now, Scott Dixon is only three points behind Newgarden in the points. If this Verizon IndyCar Series Championship for 2017 hasn't been entertaining enough, can you believe what we've just seen? You've been watching non-stop what's been going on in the number two Team Penske camp for Joseph Newgarden. A flurry of activity to try and get this car race ready again to keep his championship lead intact. And while we watch that and enjoy the closing in of this race, reminding you the Labor Day weekend tradition returns. Throwback NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series racing from historic Darlington Raceway tonight at 6 Eastern right here on NBC, capping off just a marathon day of wonderful motorsport, Formula One IndyCar and finishing it off with NASCAR in the Southern 500. Couldn't ask for anything more. Joseph Newgarden could ask for a good strong race car to finish off with. Boy, this has been a huge blow. Major, Joseph Newgarden. Major damage of the floor is broken on the, the right side. They've obviously got some suspension damage going on. On the left side, Townsend, a re well. rear wing, a front wing. Now, speaking of championship contenders, we turn now to our Chevy driver profile. We put the spotlight on a guy who knows what it's like to win a Verizon IndyCar Series championship. He still feels he can get his second one this year if things go his way. And some important numbers there for him. And one of the big news items if you look at Will Power's life big picture wise of late he has become a father over the off season and little Bo and he has been just the, the light in Will and Liz Power's eyes for sure cute little guy yeah. and he'll grow up to know all about his father's legacy in IndyCar and open wheel racing all over the world, whether it be in Australia, in Europe, and here in the United States. Well, we've got a race on our hands now, boys. Does Scott Dixon go for the layup, or does he go for a slam dunk and try to get some extra points? I think Dixon's so fast that he'd be Go disappointed ahead. not to win this thing, but it's going to be a great battle as Newgarden gets going. Unfortunately, he lost at least one lap there with the toe link change on the left rear. And guys, we saw Joseph Newgarden and Sebastian Bourdais involved in those incidents on pit lane. Tony Kanan also involved in a pit lane incident. He smacked the wall. Check this out. This is his left rear tire has completely come apart. He also had some suspension damage. And guys, I just heard over the radio, he is now done for the day. Just been a weird year for Tony Kanan. Heads up and pit out. Three unforced errors. He had the Toronto crash.
He had the warm-up lap crash at Phoenix, and now this. All right, this is what Scott Dixon was waiting for, rubbing his hands together because he was going to have to find it on track to try and catch Alexander Rossi. Now he's got a clean, fair shot. Ryan hunter Ray's not done with yet either, and there are only 11 laps to go here at the Glen. Right, right, right. Let's get back to it. 11 laps is a long way to go. It's a long track, so plenty of time. We know that these two guys are the fastest guys of the weekend, so we've got a great race here. Andretti, Ganassi, Andretti, Penske, and Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan with Graham, who always runs well here at Watkins Glen. He loves this place too. And Castro Neves is surrounded by five Hondas. Castro Neves, the lone Chevy up front there. And this will be fascinating to see what Scott Dixon can do with Alexander Rossi. And Rossi has just been so dominant, the fastest lap of the race. And his pace over a long stint has been sensational. Look at Connor Daly trying to mix it up with his teammate. The guy who really benefited from that yellow is Max Chilton, who's sitting now back there in sixth position. So that would be a great result for him. The power behind him, Andretti, Kimball. Two leaders getting away from Ryan Hunter Ray already halfway around the, the first lap of, of green and they're getting away. You know, back in the day before Alexander Rossi went to Europe and his chase to Formula One, he wanted to race here, but there was a New York state law where you had to be of a certain age before you were allowed to race on the Watkins Glen International Circuit. And he always wanted to race here. And it wasn't until last year when he got his first shot and he said, this is one of the best tracks anywhere in the world. It's a classic. It's old school, right, Jan? Yes, it is. And Lee, you would not be surprised to hear that the Andretti Autosport team for Alexander Rossi has been cheerleading him on the radio saying, Alexander, you were the fastest car even in fuel safe mode. You have got this. And of course, this extra caution really helps Alexander Rossi because at one point he had to fuel safe. Now he does not. And for Alexander Rossi, he's been the most efficient on push to pass. You see him on the button there. He has 110 seconds remaining. Nobody else has anything close. Even Scott Dixon, who historically is very conservative on push to pass, only has 72 seconds remaining. So Alexander Rossi in a great, great spot up front. And every lap for Rossi must be blissful. He loves this track. He spent all the years in Europe working on Formula One to come back here and to lead in dominant fashion. He's got to, he's got to relish every second of this. Scott Dixon obviously chasing, but I don't know how much he's chasing with urgency, Lee. If really, he feels that he has to win this race because right now, with Newgarden basically out of the running, this has really put him in a good spot for next week. Oh, it's going to be sensational, guys, when we get to Sonoma in two weeks' time. The story of the day is Joseph Newgarden coming to grief, exiting pit lane, crunching his car, and he is all alone. Yes, he's all alone on track. He's all alone at the top of the championship, but now only by three points. From 31 to three, the second car in shot is the guy chasing, and now Scott Dixon has a very real shot at a fifth Verizon IndyCar Series title. Alexander Rossi, the race leader, but I tell you what, it's by a much smaller margin. We'll tell you about that in a moment. And we want to congratulate the Mazda Road to Indy 2017 Championships, Oliver Askew in USF 2000 in Pro Mazda, Victor Franzoni and Kyle Kaiser, 2017 Indy Lights Champion. Congratulations, guys. And we look forward to watching your path and where you go in the future on your Mazda Road to Indy. Kevin, tell us what's going on. We're going to have to wait and watch. They were telling him just to be very cautious when he went out. No need to push hard. We're simply trying to turn laps. So they're going to do some more body work as you see him on the right rear cutting off a portion of that wheel cover there, something that may have been uh, impacting the tires. So at this point, it's just making sure he gets home safely. His only chance of picking up any spots is if someone has a mechanical. It's going to have to happen pretty soon for Newgarden to advance in. Yeah, that that floor is broken at the back and it's flexing that wheel pod back into the tire. You can't have that for very long. Ultimately, it'll, it will cut the tire down. Watching Newgarden's right, mistake right. again earlier. And you just can't emphasize how tricky it is in these cars on cold tires. He just overcooks it and then insult to injury. Oh. 
just gets you. completely rammed from behind by Sebastian Bourdais, who also got in too hot. But I think Bourdais would have made the corner, no problem. But he was sliding through that corner and had nowhere to go. Pretty good move by Spencer Piggott. He, he ran off the track to avoid hitting Newgarden. So he ended up right out in the middle of the line and could have got hit by somebody else as well. The other elements that we have been remiss to mention, it is extremely cool here today. There is a breeze making it quite cold. Earlier today, it was... <laughs> I got some messages while we were doing Formula One. Bring your jacket to the Glen. It's bitterly cold. And so then you got that down, that very steep downhill run on pit exit here. So all of those factors influencing what happened to Joseph Newgarden. Well, watching Newgarden come down for that last repair. Remember, these cars are basically like F-16s on the road. How would you feel if you were Newgarden? You'd see the mechanic holding a giant sawzaw to make adjustments to your car and try to keep you in the race. That was definitely a NASCAR tool, not one you would want to use on an IndyCar regularly. But Scott Dixon right there. But these guys, he's, Rossi's been so quick all weekend, turning quick laps. But Scott Dixon now has just turned the fastest lap of the race while we were at commercial break. So he wants it, but how much risk is he willing to take? And bigger picture view of this Verizon IndyCar Series Championship. Folks, we've told you many times, 31 points was Joseph Newgarden's lead over Scott Dixon coming into this second last round, round of race. Now, as they run, there's 36 points, 34 points, I should say, blanketing the top four. This is going to be insane going to Sonoma. Going to Sonoma, but it's going to be insane for the next five laps. You have the most successful IndyCar driver in the last decade going against the hottest young prospect coming up through the series with Alexander Rossi. And I think Rossi just is loving this. Sure, he's under pressure from Scott Dixon, but what a great chance to prove yourself with an awesome Andretti Honda in terms of performance going up against the Ganassi Honda with Scott Dixon. Four to go around the Glen. These guys are in a league of their own. There is almost a five second gap from Dixon back to Hunter Ray. It's been a really strong run today for RHR and the Andretti squad. They run first and third. Elio Castroneves is back in fourth. And Graham Ray Hall is in the top five. I mentioned earlier that Takuma Sato is the reigning Indy 500 champion. This man did it in the Napa scheme, which, by the way, they've re-signed for next year with Andretti as well. This was last year's Indianapolis 500. The 100th running. And I think there was an element of shock there for young Alexander that he had done it. Michael Andretti, Brian Herter. What a day that was. Well, that day was all about fuel conservation and making the most out of every drop and the question with Alexander Rossi was how fast is he actually on equal terms and he's answered that question definitively this year not just on road courses not just on street circuits but I've been most impressed with Alexander Rossi on the ovals this season he's absolutely a top five oval racer now and I'll tell you what there's no fuel Three savings Three to go. At all going on right now. These two cats are going flat out, turning qualifying laps and streaking away from Ryan Hunter Ray. Fastest driver that last lap was actually Castro Neves in the top five. So Castro Neves not giving up. He's two seconds back of Ryan Hunter Ray and he wants one more position as we see Pagano trying to get around Max Chilton here. Again, championship contender. Inside move, turn one. Wasn't quite close enough to Max to get it done. Chilton runs a little wide. This will give Simon the run, heading up into the S's. Not sure Simon, he's on push to pass, but I just don't think he's got the downforce level to get it done on the Ganassi Honda car. Pagano just burned his last second of push to pass with that move. Chilton with four seconds left. Meanwhile, Alexander Rossi has been forced to burn a ton of push to pass by Scott Dixon. They're now even. Remember, Rossi had a 40-second push to pass oh, advantage. Oh, it's on. gone. It's even. 20 seconds left between the two of them. Chilton runs this. wide there. Pagano's all Whoa. over the That's a tough place to pass there. That's about 125 mile an hour corner. And that was the looming in the background. Carlos Munoz, both ABC supply cars for AJ Foyt Racing. Munoz and Daly. That move of Pagano's was reminiscent of Newgarden on Will Power at Mid Ohio. The duck left, or duck right, fade left. Both of the guys are out of push to pass. None left for either of them. So now it's mano a mano, no assistance. 
for this 200 mile race. You get 200 seconds of push to pass. How you deploy it, it's up to you. Rossi's pulled away now from Dixon. He's got a little bit more breathing room, so nice little gap as we look out of Dixon's in car. That's the biggest gap he's had. Dixon with 13 seconds remaining, Rossi 18 seconds. So Dixon needs to make something big happen through these next seven or eight corners to give him a chance on the final lap. And I think Rossi's in a really good position, just managing the gap. He'll be no, he'll know from his team that he's got an advantage on push to pass. Tell you what, you couldn't have a race that has had more drama than this for our championship leader. So we thought it was going to rain the whole race. We've had a nice, clean, dry race from the start. And man, big drama show today for the Penske team. Enormous. And let's make sure we mention the job Ryan Hunter Ray's done today. Don't forget, it was only two weeks ago that he had a 130 G crash at Pocono. He still has to be suffering from that massive impact as we take the white flag lap here. One to go. That is all less than three and a half miles. And Alexander Rossi can get his first road course victory in Verizon IndyCar Series competition. He only has one win in IndyCar competition, but it's the biggest win you can have, the Indianapolis 500. What a day this has been, not only for Alexander Rossi and the Andretti Autosport team and the Napa 98 squad, because it hasn't all gone their way. They had those refueling issues and Alexander had to come in off sequence very early in the stint. A caution came out, a really timely caution came out, which aided them. But nonetheless, he has had the speed all day long. And Paul, I love how Alexander Rossi is finishing lap, this lap with anger. He's not just coasting it in. He wants to prove the point. I belong at the front of this field everywhere we go. Well, you can't afford to let up on the gas pedal. You can't back yourself up to a guy like Scott Dixon because he will pounce no matter what lap it is. But a nice, clean finish to the race here for Alexander Rossi. Alexander Rossi has woven together the perfect race today. It didn't look like it was going his way, but it is now. And the 25-year-old American gets his first road course win. Rossi wins at the Glen. How about that over Scott Dixon? This championship has tightened way up with one race to go. Max Chilton still holding Simon Pagano at bay. This has been an intriguing run. This is the fight for eighth. So, some valuable points elude Simon there, if only he could have got Chilton, but he still remains a championship contender. And the teammates for AJ Foyt come home, come across the line together. Munoz 10th, Daly 11th. And while all of them at the front, including race winner Alexander Rossi, are enjoying this run home, good strong top five there, by the way, from Graham Rahal. You have to think about the guy at the back that is the championship leader right here joseph newgarden it all escaped him exiting pit lane with a hard crunch into the barrier a damaged penske chevrolet and he limps home and loses 28 points of advantage to lead this championship into the final day the final race in two weeks time with just a three point advantage katie and Michael Andretti has to be so happy now that you just re-signed Alexander Rossi for several more years. Just two years with you, though, Michael. How have you seen this guy grow? Uh, he's done a tremendous job. I'm so proud of him. You know, it's a huge weekend for us, you know, after signing Napa and Napa coming back on board for two years and re-signing with Honda, who's been great to be with. And, uh, and you know, have to know that he's going to be with us another two years as well. It's fantastic. And... You know, I'm so proud of him. He's you just have been able to watch his proj uh, his progress every uh, every race, and uh, he's going to be a real force to be reckoned with. What do you expect from him as far as results? Possibly a championship soon? Well, that's that's our plan. <laughs> it's a very happy Michael Andretti down here, Lee. Well, guess what, Katie? He is in sixth. Him being Alexander Rossi.
mathematically, Alexander could still win this 2017 championship. Countdown clock continues less than two and a half hours until Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series racing. It's the Southern 500. It's the throwback weekend. Lots of cool paint schemes and dedications to heroes of the past. And that's coming your way in less than two and a half hours. It is time to begin the celebrations here at Watkins Glen. And how about this story that's developing for young American Alexander Rossi? He won for Andretti at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He's now won for Andretti at Watkins Glen, Jan. Yes, he has. And of course, <laughs> the crew douses him before he's even fully out of the car, recognizing the photographers, recognizing the crew. And one of my thoughts initially is when you look at the box score today, you'll see that Alexander Rossi started on the pole and won this race, but this was much more about that. Alexander. When you said, where does that come from? Were you talking about the win itself? No, the, the champagne in my eyes. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting that, but yeah, also the win. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, an amazing job by the whole team today. We had an issue in the beginning, right, with, with some fuel, a fuel thing, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The team recovered. We had the pace to do it. My, uh, my front ender is on FaceTime right now. He's having a kid, but it's, it's pretty amazing. It's a huge team effort. I've talked about so much how much we've improved. I'm so happy we were finally able to show that. But you also had to overcome a lot of adversity. The beginning of the race went great, and then there was an issue on your first pit stop not getting all the fuel. When you got that call on the radio, knowing you had to pit early, you must have thought, oh, no, not again. Yeah. Um, fuel and I don't seem to work in IndyCar. I don't know if I need to spend some time with a fuel rig and, like, coax it or something, but um, it's, it's, a re it's fuel problems. We won a race. It's, it's an amazing thing. But then you had an opportunity because of a caution to kind of get back on sequence. And both Paul and Townsend were talking about at the finish of the race, once you recovered from that pit stop, you had what every driver wants. You had a one-on-one -on -one duel with Scott Dixon with exact same equipment, same level of push to pass. How gratifying that you held off the man they call the master of Watkins Glen. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we, we had a fast car. I knew we had a fast car because we were hitting a fuel number. Um, before the final stop and we had pace so I knew it was gonna he was gonna be pushing like hell at the end and so it was really 12 qualifying laps and I had the car to do it um, we had we had time we had the pace the performance the tire life everything was going our way so a huge hats off to Andretti Autosport thank you to Napa Auto Parts thank you to Honda um, you know we're, we're coming really hard for 2018 well, he talks about coming hard he has finished this season incredibly three podiums just in these last few races Katie Jan Scott Dixon finished second, but Scott, more importantly, you are now just three points behind Joseph Newgarden heading into double points at Sonoma. What does that mean for your race in two weeks? Yeah, definitely a good, uh, good move on the points. You know, uh, I'm kind of shocked we ended up where we did. You know, we had to pass a lot of cars. Uh, I locked up uh, coming in on the first stop on the wet and it wouldn't downshift, so almost stalled the car, got on the pits, we couldn't even fuel it. And then we had a fumble later. We lost about another four or five spots. So we had to pass a lot of cars, so it was definitely a, a lot of work. And uh, I think the yellows just fell uh, kind of not really our way, you know. So it was one of those things. But uh, nice recovery by the team. Ended up second. Good points. Uh, it's definitely going to be close coming down to the wire here for Sonoma, which I expect nothing less for the Rise IndyCar Series. So uh, I don't know. We're going to have to up our game at Sonoma and see what we can uh, see if we can you know, carry away another, another uh, championship trophy. This will certainly make things very interesting in just two weeks, Lee. Kevin, sorry. Well, Joseph Newgarden came in as the championship leader. He's still the championship leader. You told me ahead of time, hey, I'm taking nothing for granted. We could leave here without it. What happened on pit out? Yeah, I mean, you know, regardless of the way today went, it was it was going to come down to Sonoma. Obviously, we'd like a bigger points cushion than we got today. Um, you know, I did my guys no favor here in the pits by sliding wide and, uh, or I should say, slid, slid forward too much. It made the stock really hard for me. And I thought. I thought we had Will, but you know, obviously he he did a good job just cruising out of the pits fast, and I made a mistake just just hitting the wall there. You know, I just came out of the pits too hot, obviously off the button and um, slid wide. So a couple of mistakes on my part, not good for the team, but 
you know, they're resilient. They gave me what I needed today, and I'm sure they'll give me what I need in Sonoma. So, you know, that's, that's what it's going to come down to is this final race. I know you're not into making mistakes, but explain to those of us that have not driven race cars how tough that is going downhill when it's cold like it is on cold tires to be able to try to get up to speed. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty stupid error, but um, it's easy to do, you know, especially when we don't have tire warmers. Uh, that's the good thing about IndyCar. We want it to be difficult, and it is tough when you come out of the pits, but, you know, I just made a miscalculation. I was watching Will, and I thought we had gotten him, and then I got off the button, was watching him, and then I saw him scream by me, and I just I went too heavy on the brake pedal, didn't have enough front grip, and, and obviously pushed wide. So, you know, small mistake, but those small mistakes can add up at the end of the day, so you don't want to make them, um, you know, tough time. I feel bad for my guys. It's all on me. So we got to go to Sonoma and be perfect there. Well, the positive is, as Tim Sindrick told him as he pulled in, you still control your destiny. You win at Sonoma. You will be the champion. Lee? And just some brutally honest comments there. Hiding nothing. Joseph Newgarden, it's one of those tough ones to swallow, that's for sure. We've got a whole lot of post-race reaction here, but reminding you, NASCAR America is coming up next. Top of the hour from Darlington. Looking forward to the Southern 500. Check in with Robin Miller. Robin? All right, we got Ryan Hunter Ray. The guy that followed you around with an anvil over the last two months, he vanished today. No bad luck. A good race car, a good race. Third place, brother. Welcome back to the podium. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, I would have preferred there to be no yellows because we had a nice five-second lead going there. But big, big congrats to the 98 team, to Alexander. They've been on top for him all weekend, just having that extra two-tenths of a second and um, really did a good job. In the end, we went kind of with a hybrid setup of, of wet, in between wet and dry and I just didn't have the front grip to keep up with those front two so I was pushing as hard as I could wringing the car's neck there at the end and um, and just could barely hang on so to come home third today I think that's about as uh, good as we could hope for but really happy for the 98 team and uh, and for Alex and for Brian Hurd they did a great job this weekend co executed completely you, your whole team did a great job I mean you guys were on top of things from day one did you have a good test here or did you test at all we did we had a good test here we moved forward last year What's amazing about this turnaround is last year we were uh, one of the worst teams in the paddock here. We all qualified, I think, 16th or worse, all four cars. Um, and this year it's been a complete turnaround. So really nice to have that. And uh, it's a testament to the hard work we put in. Really looking forward to the challenge of next year's car and putting the aero kit behind us, getting back to uh, an aero kit that's common throughout the uh, field. Okay, kid. Thanks. Katie? And just behind Ryan Hunter Ray was Elio Castroneves and fourth. And Elio, we always see you smiling, but today especially, you had a lot of fun today. It was a lot of fun. Let me tell you, um, anytime you go flat out in the carousel, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot, very, very tough. Hitachi Chevy was really, really good. We, we made a phenomenal exchange. The guys did a phenomenal job in the pit stop and taking us to the lead. And then over there, we're just, uh, you know, finding a way, still the track a little damp. And uh, But that's what it's all about, you know. Uh, I guess a little bit of experience helps a lot. Unfortunately, um, up the hill, I, I don't know, maybe we're a little drag or Honda was a little too strong. Uh, it was a, a hard fought with, uh, with uh, Alex. Congrats on first win and uh, also with Dixon and, uh, and uh, Ryan. So it was a lot of fun. So now we're a little closer to the championship and let's keep going. And how about that start, El? You've had some incredible ones this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you what, you know, I was taking it easy a little bit because I didn't know what's going to happen. Those guys were too close. I'm like, maybe it's going to be a problem. As soon as I start lifting off, I saw smoke i was like all right you know what let me just uh take a little cover i went out and uh when i come back i was like just take it easy and as soon as i went out and coming back somehow it's slowing down and, and the car was really really good i tell you it's special in those conditions but i knew it would be something uh, uh you gotta be taking it easy i knew ryan was a little strong but i got a huge draft actually right there i was like no ryan's not gonna come over here so it was it was kind of like where do i go but it was great everybody kind of respect a little bit so since it was wet it was a little bit difficult to figure out where to go as soon as we, as soon as we put the drives on it was actually a lot of fun so great job hitachi so i'm shame about uh, sorry about uh, joseph but it's kind of mixed feeling because i'm in the fight of this championship so um we just gotta bring it home quickly elio just 22 points behind joseph now you can't tell me that you're not wishing for a little bit of bad luck for joseph and scott in, so in sonoma i tell you what i don't wish any luck any bad luck to anybody because that come back double to you so the, the good news is i will uh, do everything i can to bring this championship home to team penske certainly is a, it's a big battle right now we have a uh, obviously scott really close but we have a uh, still a lot of a lot of speed and the good news is sonoma is a good track for team penske watch out <laughs> i think he's coming for it hard guys jan and Graham Rail had the opportunity to watch along with us that replay of the restart. And you're like, ooh, ooh, because you were in the midst of that. Started 10th today, but had a great fight all the way to 5th. Yeah, I mean, it was a good day. You know, I think we were there was a lot of passing because, you know, a lot of us expected rain. Uh, and so 
you know, with the downforce levels being all over the board, there's some guys that were really draggy. There's some guys a little more trimmed. That sounds right in the middle. But yeah, I mean, lots of excitement, a lot of a uh, lot of passing going on, and everything else. But I'll tell you, it's it's also tricky on this back straight. You have a huge crown in the road, and so when you saw the cars darting like that, it's not guys doing it. It's just the crown. It literally grabs the car. But you know, a good day for us. Uh, we're gonna fight on here. Uh, lots of uh, lots of money raised for turns for troops. The United Rentals help our vets, so I'm pleased with where we're at and. You know, we brought the 15 home with uh, no damage, so Dad will be pleased with that. No crash bill. And you said you're very much looking forward to Sonoma because there's nothing to lose. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have anything to lose coming here. But as you saw today with Newgarden, I mean, things can happen so fast that, you know, we're, we're out of, I would say, the championship, but certainly not out of finishing top three, four. I don't know. I, I haven't looked exactly, but things can go all over the place. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be in attack mode for sure. It's a shame those last two races didn't go our way uh, when they should have because we'd be right in the middle all the fight but that's the way it goes it's racing all right lee looking forward to sonoma and of course today he fought all the way back to fifth with a loose car it was a really solid fight solid effort for graham rahal he runs well at sonoma also so we look forward to seeing how high he can climb in the championship in two weeks time out in california not done yet here at the Glen. stick around Welcome back to Watkins Glen, where Alexander Rossi has won for the second time in his career after the Indianapolis 500 as a rookie. He pretty much dominates today on the road course. Team Penske also had very mixed results. We've already detailed Joseph Newgarden, Simon Pagano, and Will Power. Simon soldiers home to a ninth place finish. You were really hoping for rain, right? Yeah, yeah, we had a full wet setup on the car. Uh, we were really hoping for the rain, and unfortunately, on the first lap, I mean, it was amazing. We, we, we made six position first lap, um, but then the rain didn't come, so we were a little slow on straight away. And every restart, I was losing a lot of positions, but um, we had a lot of pace in the car and despite that, and still uh, salvage a, a ninth, which obviously we're in the hunt for the championship in Sonoma. So uh, it's a good track for us. We, we had a great weekend last year. Everything's possible. <laughs> three in front of them but very much within range double points well it's going to take a little more work for you but you're still very much mathematically alive one thing that you guys did today your guys helped pick up some spots on pit lane yeah uh, yeah definitely the verizon crew were really quick on pit lane having pit out also helped um and uh, yeah it was very messy stuff to me it's like the there's something wrong with the, the the tires that i had i don't know why um compared to the warm-up but i uh, lost a lot of positions but just fought all day and i think i finished six i don't know where i finished i think it was six so <laughs> that's a that's a reasonable day did you have the full wet high downforce setup too i had uh yeah it was pretty much a wet setup a little less than Simon, a little less drag than Simon, but uh, I think everyone was pretty heavy. Like, I didn't see anyone just motoring by people, so, um, yeah, it was a real gamble, honestly. Like, it looked like weather was coming, so, um, yeah, we, we went with the wet. What's your mindset in two weeks at Sonoma? You can probably help your teammates by winning the race somewhat, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, we need the team to win the championship, and if winning the race... Uh, helps them I will absolutely do that but yeah we'll just focus and see what we get it's a very tough tight championship and uh, any win you get these days is pretty special thanks Will 68 back in the championship fifth after a sixth place finish today Lee thanks Kevin yeah and it all just goes into the melting pot of how interesting it is to head to Sonoma in two weeks time and look at the recent run of results of good results from today's race winner Alexander Rossi second in Toronto just outside the top five in mid-Ohio, on the podium in Pocono, sixth last week in Gateway, and the winner here in Watkins Glen, and Alexander Rossi mathematically puts himself in the championship hunt. The race to win the championship, and to get your hands on the Asta Cup. Will Power knows what that's like. In fact, many of this year's championship contenders know exactly that feeling. So too does Simon Pagano as the reigning champ. Unfortunately, after 20 years, a title has eluded Elio Castro Neves. Maybe this could be his year. Scott Dixon has touched that trophy four times in his illustrious career. And then Joseph Newgarden is trying to get his first. Now with this championship five, add today's race winner, Alexander Rossi to that. Six in the mix, heading out west to Sonoma in two weeks' time. Let's show you the championship points and let's show you why those six guys are all in contention. 
Again, the 31-point advantage evaporated today for Joseph Newgarden to just three. It's going to be amazing at Sonoma. Joseph Newgarden, I like the fact that he wasn't beating himself up after a huge mistake today. He's already thinking about next weekend, and he's going to be going for it there. And, of course, Scott Dixon is going to be a force for sure. Well, we keep talking about it all year. Scott Dixon is the lone Ganassi guy trying to do it on his own. Joseph Newgarden made a critical mistake racing with his teammate who could have arguably cut him some slack right here getting out of the pits will power shoots by he's racing with his teammate he locks it up and makes that mistake and then the hit from watch this watch the car to the right this is sebastian bourdais nowhere to go right into the back of joseph newgarden the key point of this race that changed the complexion of this championship heading to the season finale and for the 12th year in succession it will be decided at the final race well and as we look at alexander rossi think about what a rejuvenated andretti autosport is going to look like next season you know penske is going to be back with at least three cars ganassi potentially focusing in so it's going to finish strong in 2017 but i'm just as excited for next season and what a day for Honda today, coming home one, two, three. First Chevy, Castro Neves, Graham Rahal, then Will Power. Solid runs for Charlie Kimball and Max Chilton. They needed good results to finish off the year strong. And Carlos Munoz and Connor Daly, I know it's 10th and 11th, but for that A.J. Foyt team, I think this was their best road course of the season. And they're building momentum. They are. You think about Gateway and the, and the recent races. Those two youngsters for, for the legend, A.J. Foyt, are really starting to get some momentum here late in the season. Joseph, Joseph Newgarden all the way down in 18th. That's his worst finish since Texas when he crashed, trying to go for a big move at the end of the race. So those have been his two races where he's made a mistake. It could be, it's going to make for one heck of a race next week. All right, Paul Tracy, Townsend Bell is going to get out his rather thick wallet and give you $1,000. Who would you put it on heading to Sonoma? <laughs> oh, I don't even want to say. A four-way four fight, I don't even, I, I got to think about it. Oh, I, I quit, can't even quit say. soft pedaling it. I'm going to give you Scott Dixon. Come on, three okay. points out, going to Sonoma, four-time champion. You're the guy, last week you said he had no chance. He was out that of it was last, last week. That was last week, my All friend. Right. You picked somebody. Go, I'm going to go Joseph. Okay, there you have it. Paul Tracy, Joseph Newgarden, Townsend Bell, Scott Dixon. Who do you think at home? It doesn't really matter because it's going to be decided in two weeks' time. Sonoma Raceway, California, right here on your home of motorsport. That does it. Two parts of this triple header day are complete. Formula One's done, IndyCar's done. Up next, it's NASCAR America from Darlington, followed by the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series Southern 500. It's the throwback weekend. Can't wait for it. What a day we've got here for you on NBCSN. We'll see you in two weeks' time for the championship decider, the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma, Sunday, September 17 at 6.30 Eastern. On behalf of the entire team, thanks for watching IndyCar on NBCSN.